broad areas that would qualify one for this position uh, would be judicial skills and experience. Uh, and I'm quite satisfied in that regard. And that involves things like industry, independence, integrity, and so on. Then the second broad area is leadership and people skills. And again, you've said a lot about that. You've been questioned about that, um, particularly managing lawyers is not an easy uh, task. And um, I should imagine managing judges is even worse <laughs> of all different persuasions. <clears throat> But the, so the area I really want to talk about is the third area, which is the administrative and management skills and experience. Um, you, I take your point about not being uh, a super SG, as you say, and that you also you don't like budgets very much. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, this position. Uh, will require those things. You, you, you are, in a, in a way, in a, a person who is in charge of, for lack of a better word, an organization or a, a, a department. So do you have those skills? Are you, if you don't, will you be able to develop them? And by that, I don't mean you must do a big comb or anything like that but just to be able to, to manage a, 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 a budget and organization. And um, management in my book also would involve, or, or rather leadership and management would also involve the, your position as chairing the JSC, because that also is not just like sitting on the chair. It's about organizing the meetings, the dates, you know, managing all of us here and, 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 and all that, and interacting with the administrative staff. So if we talk about that, the kind of dry side of things, not the forensic skills and all that, um, wh wh where do you stand on that? Uh, Commissioner Pofu, um, if I created uh, the, the impression that um, I'm, I'm saying uh, all that my focus would be, would more be leading in terms of, which is what I said, leading in terms of um, uh, crafting a lasting and credible uh, jurisprudence. Um, that is not what I meant, but I did say to me that is key. Mm. Um, but I by no means meant that that should then take away the need for a chief justice to be a leader. I did not mean to say that. If I gave that impression, I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> but I would uh, want to take issue with regard to the question of the actual management of the, the budget. Yes, of course, uh, you as the leader of the judiciary will know what the courts need and other aspects closely related to the courts. So you will have to have an input assisted, of course, by other heads of courts at all levels, have an input on what should go to the, the, the budget, but without literally managing it yourself. I think as Commissioner uh, Singh said, uh, the accounting officer, even on the model that uh, the Commissioner was suggesting, would remain the, the Secretary General. So I just want to, 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 to qualify that one aspect. <clears throat> but focusing more on your point about leadership and administrative skills. Here's something that I want to, to emphasize. I have touched uh, on a good few occasions on the aspect 
of uh, me having actually led a court. I just want to again go back to the other aspect which was not leading a court but leading a relatively sizable entity which as I said comprised around 100, and, uh, 100 people. Um, let me emphasize this about that and it actually goes to the core of one of the things that I highlighted with regard to uh, what I think a leader, a leader should do, leader in general now, that is being able to come in and decide where you want to take the, in, the, the institution. And two, if, if it's an institution that exists, being able to identify problem areas and come up with solutions. Now, the entity I'm referring to is that Exchange Control Amnesty Unit. That was set up by an act of parliament which gave the tag chairperson to the leader and that I was appointed. But effectively, when you went through the act, it had the effect that the chairperson was actually the chief executive officer of that entity. Now, what do we get in terms of facilities? National Treasury gave us a floor, literally empty floor. So I, together with the other Amnesty Unit members, started that entity from scratch. So this is where my notion of being able to identify where you want to take an entity to. So at a strategic level, we as the Amnesty Unit, under my leadership, decided where we wanted to take that entity. And at the initial stages, we ourselves, because we did not even have support staff at the beginning, had to decide, take decisions even on mundane issues like what do we want in terms of even office furniture, this and that, other facilities, your computers and blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, we had to take decisions at a strategic level. And there was resistance to this because people were suspicious, very suspicious of it. And I had to go out to the public and sell the idea. I also invited interested groups. We, we, we received advocates, we received attorneys. They are, they are, they are clients, of course, nowhere in sight. You know, and they would ask hypothetical questions. How are you going to do this? And we had to sell that. And uh, at the end of it all, it was a resounding success. And I want to look for what I said is on the on here, and which I said I wanted to to quote from. Please just bear with me, Commissioner. But the emphasis I'm making is that throughout this demonstrated that I truly am a leader. I cannot only run with an existing entity, but I can actually start an entity from scratch. Here's what Deputy Minister of Finance, uh, 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 Honorable Jabu Muleti Keti said at the conclusion of the process, open quote, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Amnesty Unit for their sterling work. When the unit was initially announced, we did not anticipate the huge task it would be faced with, both in the number of applications received we received in excess of 43,000 applications and the associated logistics. And I might add that we did not have a single review application. And we did dismiss some of the applications. We did not receive a single review application. It is through the exceptional efforts and meticulous approach of our unit that other countries, and I want to emphasize this, now seek to use our amnesty as an international benchmark. 
I wish to specifically thank the chairperson, Advocate Mbuiseli Madlanga, who has led the Amnesty Unit impeccably and with great enthusiasm. So I think that amply demonstrates that I do have leadership and administrative skills. And I want to uh, complete this response, uh, Commissioner Mpofu, by saying, to those that seek to emphasize, and uh, this is something I've seen quite a lot in, uh, in, in the media, those, not that I'm saying is the media saying it, is people commenting and saying, uh, saying so in the media. To those who seek to emphasize the idea that, but I lack leadership, I don't. Hmm. I don't. And having started an entity like this from scratch, in an area, and I again emphasize this, in an area that was completely foreign to me, and I led it to success, how much more will I be able to perform in an area where I have grown up? I have grown up within the judiciary. I have been associated with the judiciary for 40 years. Anybody who wants to suggest that, just because I have not been a judge president for four years, five years, six years, or at any other leadership of the judiciary for an extended period, therefore, I am not suited. I do not agree. Thank you. I do not agree. No, thank you very much. In fact, that's, that last part is exactly why I asked you the question. Because, you know, I know you are all humble and collegial, but ultimately this is a competition. One of, one, one of uh, the colleagues, your colleagues, uh, one of the commissioners, I think it was you, Commissioner, sorry for pointing at you, mm. said I should sell myself, I guess I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm warming up. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it didn't mean that much. <laughs> No, yeah, no, no, no. I, uh, on a serious note, yes, because that is the point, as you have correctly alluded to. The fact is that the other candidates that you are competing with or against have demonstrable leadership uh, pedigrees within the judiciary. But I agree with you that leadership is a much wider, yeah. much wider concept. And by the way, I attest to how you led us in the Marikana Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now, the, the next area I want to ask you on is transformation. You, I don't have to give you any long introductions. You occupied the seat that I'm occupying here in the JSC uh, for Advocates for Transformation. So you... Uh, you, you don't need to be lectured about the imperatives of transformation. <clears throat> but I want to link that to your um, feminism. You said you are a feminist. I'm a feminist too. But as you know, there are different types of feminists. And uh, I, I'm probably, I'm a radical and socialist fe feminist. I don't know what type you are. But at least there's one thing that is um, common, uh, which is the idea that the, it's, it's no longer just about equality, but uh, taking active steps to ensure that women occupy their, their place in, in society, not just in, within the profession. But let's come back to the profession. What have you done or what would you do, maybe more importantly, forget about what you have done. What would you do as Chief Justice to ensure that the idea of um, um, equality is not just lip service and it's not just a numbers game. It's about um, qualitative change uh, and bringing, infusing uh, certain ideas within, or, or, or rather, and killing certain ideas that are that might be pervasive within within the profession in particular, along the lines of 
in other words, what would we gain by having a feminist chief justice like you? Um, the practical difficulties are that um, it is more the, the profession itself that should uh, fight those battles. It is my organization, I will still own it even though I'm no longer in it, advocates for transformation in which you are. These organizations like Babasa, it is even in the attorney's profession like BLA, Nadell, uh, that uh, need to fight those battles. I know that uh, a retort might be, but we, we, we have been fighting them, but we are still where we are. But that's a fight that uh, should never, ever end. If anything, it should be intensified. The, the problem is always, always briefing patterns. I touched on it in the context of my, my, my not just myself, of course, but I use myself as an example. Um, um, it, it, the problem is, is that it's a perennial problem, it's a systemic problem. Um, but as a Chief Justice, what can you do? Maybe more engagement with the profession itself and uh, maybe selling the ideas of getting uh, uh, the profession at all levels to do some of the things, for example, that I, as an advocate, at a transformative level, in practical terms, was able to do. So much that uh, Advocate Nsaluba SC, in a letter of motivation, at the nomination stage before the president, wrote this about me. He said, I do not only speak about transformation at public platforms or on podiums. And he says, I, and I quote, leave, L-I-V-E, transformation, close quote. And what did he mean by that? <clears throat> what I used to do as an advocate was to try, to a limited extent, of course, because as an ind individual, you can only do so much. Um, for example, in Johannesburg, I contacted him and I asked if, if he would have any problem if I mentioned his name and he said not. In my Johannesburg chambers and for an extended period, I accommodated advocate uh, uh, Emmanuel Mukuto. He is now senior counsel. I'm not claiming credit for the fact that he is now senior counsel. But he had just started at the profession. And you will know that by use are the greatest barrier to entry or to entering the profession. And in my Tata chambers, I did the same. I accommodated uh, Kwezi Mukuto him as well for an extended period. And how was this possible? It was possible because my practice took me all over the country. So it wasn't as if I'm there and I feel I'm, I'm, I'm crammed up. I was all over the country. So basically my chambers were, were literally theirs. <laughs> That's just one, the one aspect. Yes, the, so can I yes. okay. Um, maybe it's because I know some of the stories. I, I'm quite satisfied with what you did as, let me, as okay, counsel. Let me, let me, let me, let me, yes. Yeah. Uh, may I zoom in on, on your question? On, on I, the, was, I was merely Sorry, before you do that, sorry, uh, uh, Justice I'm sorry for uh, Maybe yes. ju I should focus the question. Le I'll give you a practical example. Justice Mukhueng, Mukhueng. Yes. For example, and I think to some extent, um, J.P. Mlambo. Yes. Always told us here, or told candidates, that from the bench's perspective, I mean, we have all our gripes about transformation and yeah. the lack thereof yes. in the profession. But from the perspective of the bench, yes. uh, Chief Justice Mohueng would lament the frequency with which, for example, yes. the state in the Constitutional Court is represented yes. by white counsel, yes. white males at that. Um, and we've all been trying to find ways in which the judiciary can intervene. Of course, you're right, Pabasa, AFT, and so on must do it. But there must be a role for the judiciary itself 
And for example, JP Mlambo initiated a system where they would take, literally take uh, names of who appears in which matter. I don't know what happened to that project. In a way, obviously, you can't just say brief this one or brief that one, but trying yeah. to nudge uh, yeah. the, 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 the balance. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was, with that illustrative, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Pofu. With that illustrative, uh, what I was trying to make, is, or rather to, the point I was trying to make was the, the, the bar itself can do certain things and that as Chief Justice, I would be willing if appointed to interact with the bar. Not just at, I mean, the, 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 the lament of, the Chief, of Chief Justice Mohueng is a lament shared by all of us. I mean, at T, we would sometimes whisper, just look at, his, at what is happening in there. I mean, it, it, it strikes us all. It strikes us to the core, all of us. So at that level, you know, engage the leadership of all the professional bodies, the, those that I have referred to, and even the, 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 the statutory um, bodies as well, uh, led by you, um, Commissioner Jepu, engage them and raise these concerns and, 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 and see if it is possible to come up with practical ways. Because as I think you were saying about uh, Chief Justice Mukweng, we, 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 we as the bench, we cannot tell whoever whom or who not to brief. We, we, we can't do it. But at the level of the professions, but the minister is here with us from the side of the state. Uh, I, I, I do not know, but the uh, minister knows better at the level of, uh, you know, or rather in practical terms. I know in the context of a certain judgment in which I wrote a dissent, a figure was given that uh, the set aside for black practitioners is 75 percent that is what was said in one of the documents that served before us but as i say uh, at the level of implementation whether or not that is what is happening is something else those are the sort of issues that a chief justice would uh, one engage uh, the the professions about and possibly even uh, even 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 the minister Thank you, President. Thank, Thank you very much, Commissioner. Commissioner Mbofu. Thank you, Justice Mbofu. Thank you, Commissioner. Advocate Madonzai. Good afternoon, uh, Justice Madlanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, I must uh, put forward the disclaimer that you and I speak frequently and we are friends and uh, it is on that note that I have uh, I have to declare that uh, I know you very well. Thank you Commissioner. But that won't help you. <laughs> <clears throat> you have expressed yourself very firmly on the idea of the Chief Justice being an intellectual leader of the judiciary. I, I, I consciously avoided that term. <laughs> Well, that's the, that's the impression you left in my mind. But I certainly think you are right about that, that a, a chief justice should be an intellectual, intellectual leader uh, of, the, of the bench, of the entire bench. But we as the public have no way of knowing whether you are really an intellectual leader. Uh, and you are or you measure up to that standard. Uh, the only way one is likely to be able to ascertain that as a matter of assessment is with regard to what your colleagues say about you. And that will arise more readily from the dissent or judgments which you have written being concurred to by other judges. Yeah. Or the number of instances in which judges differ with you. On an average, are you able to indicate, with reference to the judgments you have written, 
as a member of the Constitutional Court, how many times or how frequently have your colleagues concurred on or concurred to your judgments? Firstly, and uh, what is the regularity of them dissenting on your judgments? And which of the judgments have you delivered which you regard as groundbreaking and, if I may say, pretty much of, of authoritative in their breath and ambit as to set you apart from all other judges in the country? You, the last part is uh, <laughs> quite an ask about setting me apart from the, the at, at the level at the level at, at, at which uh, this was pitched um, but uh, I am happy because I did not do an exercise myself but I'm happy that uh, the general counsel of the bar I'm sure you saw in their cont in their comments they actually do a very detailed breakdown on the question you asked about, uh, uh, you know, dissents and majority judgments and so on. And uh, what comes out of those comments is that uh, by far uh, most of my judgments are majority judgments. Uh, I think by, uh, by quite a substantial percentage. Uh, where there are differing views in, in judgments, mine by far in terms of percentages are in the majority. And uh, what is worth noting in that comment is that they say uh, I have uh, written dissents in only four matters, which means I was not able to command a majority in only, only four matters. That is what, as I said, I did not do the exercise myself, but what, that is what, uh, what the GCB says. Uh, then on groundbreaking uh, judgments, um, I would say Paulson is, in this sense. Is that Paulson versus Slipknot? Yes. On, on Duplum Rule? Uh, ah, let's leave out, let's leave out the Duplum Rule. <laughs> <laughs> That was the very first case that dealt with uh, our general jurisdiction. It charted the path as to how exactly we engage with the idea of our, our general jurisdiction. And that is the judgment uh, that the Constitutional Court codes day in and day out on our, our general jurisdiction. Um, I would also say uh, uh, the judgment in New Nation Movement is also, I think, a landmark uh, judgment because it is a judgment uh, that, on independent uh, of uh, independent electorates. Yes, that uh, that uh, that changes our uh, to an extent, of course, our our electoral electoral system introduces the change that you that you mention and i would say also that uh, even the buanya judgment that i delivered on the 31st of uh, of december december 2021 uh, i think it is i was i was the next question was in relation to that case uh, uh, the minister master of the high court case buanya judgment mm. I, I think, I suspect it must have been the first time that the Constitutional Court ever overruled its earlier decision directly. <laughs> You're sorry. And I want to ask a question on that topic because uh, I'm thinking of uh, the parties in Fox versus Robinson, the case which you, you overruled. How, how they feel about the outcome of the judgment now that they, they were a few years earlier. <laughs> yes. Uh, you have written before as a judge of the Constitutional Court about the importance of studying the cases 
as foundational to the rule of law, in that case, Ten Bull Jackson. Jackson case, which is also quoted for, uh, often in our courts. Uh, as an apex court, as I said, you should speak authoritatively in a manner that uh, chants the legal position for the courts below you, the, high, the SCA, the High Court, even the Magistrates Court, and all the courts. And uh, what do you think should be the circumstances in which the court readily over, over, overrules its own early decision? I will, I, Commissioner, I will latch on to, to two adjectives that you have used. At the beginning of this question, you said, uh, we, 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 did you say directly? Oh yes, you said directly overruled. Please. And uh, what was the last one? You said right at the end. Well, I'll, I'm sorry, Justice Matlang, I use so many adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, let me just answer the point of substance. Um, um, maybe one will say it was all fancy footwork, but, but I do not read or understand my judgment in Buanya to be directly overruling folks v. Robinson. But yes, I immediately accept that the outcome does, in a sense, have that effect because the outcome is the direct opposite of what folks v. Robinson held. Why do I say it was, I, I did not directly overrule folks v. Robinson. It is because I say, one, before us in this case, there was something factual, something evidentiary. And I say folks v. Robinson cannot bind us now on factual matters. So bringing my mind to bear on the factual issues before us now, I am led to a different direction. That's the first aspect. Then the second aspect is, I also said, I read in the Pashao judgment by Kachalia J.A. a development of the common law, which was not there when, um, when, when folks V. Robinson was decided. So a combination of the two, factual issue, development of the common law, was able to take me, and I think comfortably so, in the direction that I took and the outcome that I reached in the end. So, it's a, as I say, one may say, ah, we hear you, but ah, it's just footwork. But I think there was a sound jurisprudential basis for that approach, and it was not a direct overrule. Uh, the context in which the judgment of Buanya was, was uh, reported, was decided, was uh, in relation to domestic partnerships, in this case, life partnerships. And I see the dissent by Jafta and uh, DCJ Zondo, I think, no, no, it's uh, Chief Justice Mokhoi. It's Mokhoi, Chief Justice Mokhoi. Mokhoi. Yeah, the ACJ did not sit here. Yeah. It bemoans the fact that uh, your judgment may very well be an intrusion on the province that is traditionally preserved for parliament to regulate. Do you uh, not think that uh, regulation of domestic relationships is a matter that should be that should be properly regulated by a comprehensive legislation by Parliament. That is exactly why, because uh, the declaration uh, has been suspended and uh, Parliament is uh, hopefully going to do exactly that. So, so the horse has not bolted. Uh, but, but to answer the question frontally, um, I do not agree that what we decided as the majority in any way encroached on the turf or terrain of, uh, of, of, of parliament. 
we decided the case strictly within our own uh, powers. Finally, I don't know, I don't want to <coughs> take much time. Uh, we have had four chief justices in this country. It was Chaskas in court, uh, which laid the foundations. We then were, we had the Langa court, which uh, had some challenges, including the show permit. And we had the Ngobo court, or the court led by Chief Justice Ngobo, and uh, the Mkhuen court. It had, all of them had their own challenges and their own uh, milestones which they've overcome or achieved. What do you envision would be or should be the distinctive feature of the Madlanga court if you are appointed as Chief Justice? Um, I, let me start at the level of accepting as I did when Commissioner Malema asked me, you know, we do have uh, problems and I immediately accepted that. I would want to see a Madlanga court that is elevated to a level where the criticisms, at least those of the present moment, will be a thing of the past. Of course, and I, I, I emphasize the point that I've just made because there can never be a point at which there will never be criticism. That's an unattainable uh, uh, goal. So I want a constitutional court, a Madlanga court that will run like a well-oiled machine and that will churn out a jurisprudence that we and hopefully the rest of our country can be proud of. Uh, finally, oh. Oh, okay. I said finally, I said finally, <laughs> finally, it seems to me that the problems which have been created in the Constitutional Court with regard to uh, delayed judgments are an incident of a, an enlarged jurisdiction of the Constitutional Court post-2013. Uh, do you not think that in order to alleviate those problems, you as a Chief Justice, Chief Justice if you are elected or appointed, should rethink the jurisdictional uh, powers of the Constitutional Court and go back to a, a more limited jurisdictional uh, ambit of the Court than it is currently the case? Because you said it's about 300, 400 cases. Uh, close to, yeah, yeah. It, it was day, it 393 like, last year. It seems unfair to criticize the Constitutional Court under the circumstances with the load that they are shouldering. And, uh, and on that, may I just, just please, please hold your thought. May I add this because some naysayers may say, ah, they are talking. We, we do X number of cases at this court maybe the High Court or, or even other uh, superior courts. May I just uh, chip in and say, three, three colleagues, acting colleagues, independently of each other, in conversation with me, and, and I must say, they have been at the High Court and two of them had acted at the, at the, at the, at the Supreme Court of Appeal and one of them, was a permanent member of the Supreme Court of Appeal, all three independently of each other said, as judges, they have never worked as hard as they have worked at the Constitutional Court. Sorry, sorry for interrupting that. I thought I, thought I should just put it on the table. Yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, what I was trying to ask you on is whether, is it not perhaps the time in order to deal with the current outcry of the court not uh, being able to cope with its load. 
Is it not time that the new Chief Justice should take us back to the time when the jurisdiction of the court was more limited than what it presently is? That is a, a policy issue um, with wide ramifications uh, which would uh, involve a few role players. I think it is something that uh, one would have to apply one's mind to um, quite seriously before even being able at a forum like this uh, to be able to say this is my view on it. No, that is my view on it. I would, yeah, it's, 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 it's a matter of uh, some magnitude. I'm not ducking the question, hopefully. <laughs> well, my recollection is that the incident of increasing the jurisdiction of the court had to do with personalities who were in the office at the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the strong personalities, the one heading the, the Supreme Court of Appeal, the other one heading the Constitutional Court. Yeah. Th thank you, Commissioner. I, I, I would just say it's, it, it's something that one would have to really sit down on and uh, apply one's mind to as i say it's a it's a it's a it's a huge policy issue yeah it one cannot give an off-the-cuff response to it i do not think yeah thank you thank you justice Mr. thank you very much uh, commissioner thank you uh, thank you commissioner madanzela maybe follow up uh, is lamola You may proceed, uh, Honorable Minister. Yeah, thank you. Uh, on the same point that he, he has raised, uh, I'm on the flip side of it. Uh, I think it was Justice Matopo in his last interviews. He suggested that we should collapse the Supreme Court of Appeal and make uh, some chamber in the Corn Court and have one Apex Court. It's almost and opposite of what Madonsala was asking. What will be your view to, to that? Because it's all, uh, Minister, because uh, it, it raises an issue that is closely bound with the other issue. On that as well, I, I, I would say it's something that one would have to sit down and apply. It is so that uh, the, the, the point that you raise uh, it's not a new issue, and I'm sure when uh, my colleague uh, uh, Justice Matopo raised it, uh, he raised it also well aware of the discussions around it. Um, when uh, the late Chief Justice uh, Ismail Mohammed uh, was still alive, leading uh, uh, the, the Supreme Court of Appeal, and I was acting uh, there, he was for the idea of a chambered apex court, one chamber exercising general jurisdiction and the other chamber exercising constitutional jurisdiction. Um, and, and, and I, uh, perhaps I may be speaking out of turn here, uh, I do not think the, the transfer, for example, of the Chief Justiceship from Bloemfontein to Bramfontein would have been as easy as it was if he had not unfortunately um, um, passed on uh, you know, as quickly as he did. That battle about the chambers would probably have, have gone on for quite a while. And uh, maybe, who knows, maybe it might uh, still not have been uh, resolved even now, and maybe the Chief Justice, oh, but he would have retired by now. <laughs> so the short point I'm making, the short point I'm making, Minister, is that uh, it, it, this is quite a complex issue. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Justice Madlanga, don't you think that over and above the workload of the Constitutional Court, some of the systems or practices of that court are also contributors um, you know, to, to 
judgments taking longer uh, to be delivered. I, I agree, and uh, in my note now, because I, I, after you had asked me certain things that related to the delays, I could not, because I would have been repetitive, go right to the beginning of my vision, go all the way down with it. I actually do have uh, something that touches on the practices. For example, I say on there, and it is one of the proposals I am making, but which I am yet to table before colleagues, but it's already on the document that I said is final and maybe circulated in October or latest early March. And one of that is, uh, I've repeatedly mentioned uh, the question of a post-hearing note uh, to you, commissioners. Um, and then a first draft by the allocated scribe. One thing that I think is wrong, which we do, and I suggest in the revised uh, working procedures we should do away with, we, quite early on, there will be a colleague who indicates at the stage of the post-hearing note that they do not agree with an approach by the allocated scribe. But we rarely ever have the disagreeing colleague right, right at that stage. An opposing draft usually comes in after the second, sometimes even after the third draft. Now remember I talked about comments, comments, comments at every stage. If an opposing judgment comes in after the second or third draft, now remember that there are going to be comments, comments, comments on that as well, and there will be a few drafts on that one as well. So it does lengthen the, the time quite considerably. Short point, I agree with what you say, that the processes themselves also do contribute. What do I suggest in the revised working procedures? I say, Right at the start, colleagues, if there's disagreement, must engage each other as seriously and as heatedly, but I do not mean uncollegially, as possible. And outside, even outside of emails, because as you know, when you acted there, you usually express your disagreement by email. But Based on the proposal that I am putting forward, I say you may even go beyond just re responding by email because with emails you sometimes talk past each other. You pick up the phone because you are now not physically at court. You engage each other. Once you see that there is no way you will find each other, then the opposing colleague must have the exact same guide uh, deadlines, I'm sorry, as the allocated scribe. Then the timing of the judgment and even the final judgment, and as you know, on average, we have three drafts. So the third draft being what we call the read-through draft. So it means even the, the, the opposing draft, the deadline for those read-through and all, will be at the same end point. That will reduce the time quite considerably. Short point, I agree with you, yes, our processes do contribute, but in the working document, at least with regard to this one, there is a proposal that I am going to be putting on the table, and it is exactly what I've just said to you now. Thank you. In fact, the one I had in mind when I posed my question to you, and which I had occasion to raise during my stint was the unnecessary delays that happen after a judgment has been read through by the judge. Okay. I remember an instance where a judgment uh, took almost two months after the read through to be handed down. You, I, I do not uh, because I, I, I do not know why it would delay it that much because uh, as you know what follows after the judges uh, read through is what are called uh, clerk processes. So the clerks just do editorial work, 
dotting the T's, just checking, you know, those, uh, and even citations and things like those. And uh, at the most, that takes, what, maybe about two weeks? There about, give or take. So I, I, I have no explanation at all, and I do not even know which matter that was. Uh, it should not be. It, it, that's not part of our processes. Um, I do not know what went wrong there. It just sh it should not be like that. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, Commissioner. I am one of the commissioners on this commission that represents the practicing advocates. Yes. And so I obviously want to take up a few things with you out of the GCB's very glowing review of your work. Um, the first aspect that you said you took very seriously was the question of the way women are addressed and how matters may affect them. And I, I thought that was laudable. My question relates to how the position of Chief Justice, if it were given to you, would enable you to take steps to enhance the dignity and the independence of women over and above the laudable manner in which you set about expressing yourself in relation to women. Let me premise it by this. Much of what you said has impressed enormously as to, you, you refer just to yourself as a trendsetter in writing judgments. My colleague referred to you as an intellectual leader. Um, and that's a role you already fulfilling and playing. So why is it that we should appoint you as Chief Justice? What would that position enable you to do, first in relation to women, which you haven't already done? I, I think, uh, well, with regard to trends, uh, it, 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 was, uh, it was more forward-looking than factual now. Uh, it's the other one that perhaps uh, it may be taken as, uh, as factual. But anyway, <coughs> um, I would say if, if you come in with uh, those uh, qualities and uh, if you remember in those very same comments you, you, you referred to, the GCB first quotes from my article on uh, uh, a feminist approach to the adjudicative process and it says in so many words and we will come back to this and then when they deal with my Buanya judgment they quote copiously from it I think it's towards the end if I'm not mistaken and then they make the point they make the point that now we take you back to the earlier quotation this judgment shows that he is not just paying lip service to sensitivity on feminist issues. He actually, even in his judgments, does show that this is something that he truly believes in. Now, coming or zooming in on your question, if you come in as a chief justice and you actually, as the bar says, you leave this thing, uh, 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 these issues, and it's not lip service to you, I think you will be able, you will be able to address the issue that you are raising. I think that is what you would be able to, 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 to bring on the, on the table, at least on that score. Thank you. Let me give you another example and ask you to um, deal with it also. The GCB review refers to the other article you wrote on um, judging according to personal attributes and refers to you saying that a diversity in the judiciary is important to actually achieve a just outcome and you yourself explained what you meant earlier. Now, as Chief Justice, if you were to... Mm -hmm. 
and clear guidance and clear precedent that's easily understood mm. by the legal community and the community yeah. at large. Yeah. <coughs> um, I address the issue of diversity in the context of that article to show that uh, there is functional value in diversity. Yes, it is important when this august body complies with section 1742 for all sections of our uh, community to feel represented, to feel that the, the judiciary is theirs, to own it. So the composition, how it looks, that is important. But in that article, I also emphasize that is now beyond just how does it look. I emphasize the functional value. So here comes diversity and its functional value. Uh, maybe I, I, I can best illustrate this. Please forgive me, uh, Acting President. Maybe I can best uh, address this or illustrate this by referring to a judgment by uh, Justice Thurgood Marshall of the United States of America in the matter of CRAS, K-R-A-S, where in ringingly um, um, rebuking language fought with, and, and Justice Thurgood Marshall was African American, I should say that, and, and the only one on the Supreme Court bench. Uh, and the case arose out of something that on the face of it was quite small. It was, if I am to try to understand the, the American system in a manner that makes sense to me, it was about paying a fee to be able to lodge civil, proceeding, civil proceedings which probably would have been the equivalent of the re revenue stamps that used to be attached to process in South Africa. Small, modest amount. And Mr. Kras was not able to pay that. This was, this was an issue that was litigated all the way to the Supreme Court of Appeal. And the white justices on the bench said, this is all nonsense. Does it mean that he cannot even afford a, 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 a ticket to go to the movies? This is even less than the, um, the, an, an amount to pay for, for a ticket to, to go to the, to, the, to the movies. Justice Marshall said, my colleagues here, it, it, is, it is a great pity that my colleagues and I should not differ on matters of principle but should differ on a total or complete lack of understanding how we as um, African Americans live, how the reality of our poverty, to them what is merely an amount to go to a movie means to Mr. Kras the difference between having a meal on his table or going to bed hungry. And as I say, he was very rebuking, very stinging in his language. What's the relevance of this? That is where diversity comes in. Surely in their engagements, in their interactions as justices, he would have raised all of these issues, but he did not succeed. But in many a case, if you come in and your coll colleagues do not have an idea where, or were not even aware of these realities that affect you as a different community. You come in, you bring that to the fore, it will suddenly, or at least may suddenly dawn on your colleagues that, oh, we almost missed it altogether. So diversity has a functional value in that sense, and that is why I, as an individual, value it. And that is why I, I think it is necessary in, in, in our judiciary. 
Thank you. You've certainly persuaded me of um, the power of that answer. What I wanted to understand from you is how would being Chief Justice enable you to do more in that regard or lead effectively to, to take that all into account and still achieve clear precedent and certainty in our law? Because um, you see, I'm starting from the position that that view that you've already expressed is something you've already brought to the fore in the court as a member of that court. And I want to understand how being Chief Justice will enable you to, um, to do more in that regard. That is, uh, that for me is an unending battle. So um, seeing, I'm sure you saw how passionately I speak about this. So it's, it's, it's a continuous battle, it's a continuous fight for me. So, so I, I, I hope and believe that I, I, I would be able as a leader to influence the judiciary to the extent that in a given case, this is something that may come to the fore and be crucial to the determination of a given matter. Thank you very much. Um, that's you. my time up, but thank you for a thank very you. good answer. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, I, I need to Advocate Ken, if you, if you could switch up. your... Thank you. Microphone can, I, can I follow up on... on yes, on you may. Uh, uh, thank you. Commissioner Matolo, for example. Thank you, Justice Matlanga. I think myself and <laughs> Commissioner Kane, we had the same <laughs> uh, questions, but I just want to follow up on what, especially on your article, on the feminist pers perspective to judgment writing. It actually even responds to some of the questions that were raised, I think, in your pack. There were questions raised by an organization called WISE. Uh, women inspired solutions for empowerment. With the scourge of femicide and gender-based violence in South Africa, how do you think, can you take me through, I just want to understand how you are going to take what you are saying in this article mm -hmm. to, to permeate down to even the district courts or for people to understand what you are saying. It was very, it's a refreshing article, but I need a better, you know, insight. Yes. I, 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 I think the very fact, in fact, that article, uh, Commissioner Lepo, uh, I, 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 I don't see the first part, my apology, I've always known you as Commissioner Lepo, my apologies. Um, the, 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 the very, uh, that article rather, it, it, it was converted to an article from an address I made, uh, having been invited to go address judges at a, a, an educational seminar for, 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 for judges, I converted it to an article. Now, it, it, I think it is something that would have to be used. I could do it uh, myself as well, you know, to go to all levels of the, the judiciary. For example, if you saw, I think about three, in, in fact, I think it's even four cases on rape, where the most outrageous uh, language is used against the woman uh, survivors of, of rape. Those four cases, I think, were, were at the, the, the magistrate's court level. And, and of course, there are high court judgments as well. So, the very fact that this was raised at the level of uh, speaking to or attempting to educate colleagues, one can take it from there and try to spread it as possible to the rest of our structures within, within the, the judiciary. And maybe one could even try to to broaden it as much as possible. I think, uh, uh, Justice Malang, I further follow up on, I think on page 49 of that article, I, I took the liberty of actually downloading it. 
just to try and understand, yes. because it really excited me. You said uh, the, the same project has been undertaken in Canada and UK and Australia. Do you think, and you, you said you wish, one wish is that there should, should be such a project in South Africa. Do you think it can be followed up or to, to try and address these issues of gender by way based on it? It is something that, uh, that could and maybe should actually be taken up. To, to, just to, 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 to put uh, other commissioners uh, uh, in the picture, what Commissioner Lepu is referring to is what um, lawyers in the countries that uh, the commissioner refers to do is they will take a case that raised concerns around issues affecting women as women, a case where a judgment has already been delivered and that for whatever reasons is just insensitive to gender issues, they will take it and run it sort of as a mock case and even write a judgment, an alternative process of sorts, and uh, then get to the sort of judgment that they think ought to have been delivered in a case of that nature. Um, that is something that could actually play a very vital role in the education process, in addition to whatever processes may be in existence, you know, taking actual life cases and saying they got it completely wrong. How should it have been done? And doing this in a manner that is gender sensitive, that is sensitive to, to all other related issues. Uh, I think it would be quite, uh, quite useful as an uh, educational tool. Thank you, Commissioner Matolo Lepu. Commissioner Tsepe, I nearly said Pese. <laughs> I prefer President Tepe. <laughs> Thank you, Acting President Tepe. Good afternoon, Justice Madlanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Thank you for engaging us on these very interesting topics. I have two questions for you, and, and they, they could be seen as follow-ups in a way. The, the first one relates to the question that um, uh, acting President uh, Pete raised with regard to the two issues at, at the Constitutional Court, one being uh, you, you answered the issues on delay, but uh, Commissioner Dodovu then asked you on the second issue, which was the quality of the judgment uh, 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 of the court. Um, you answered the issue, as I say, on the delays and on the issue of the quality of the judgments. You said you require uh, details. And I want to give you an opportunity, as uh, Commissioner Nyambi said, you must take up these co opportunities and respond to them. Uh, with the first one on the delays, you didn't ask for specification on this one you did. And I want to believe that you would know whether there are issues or not. Uh, with regard to quality of judgments, and if you think they are not, it's also okay to say you don't me, think they are, or if they uh, are, how should we resolve them? That's the first question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe let me, let me say this. I wrote a judgment which has been roundly criticized a judgment in the matter of uh, Sita versus Gijima, roundly criticized. Um, and uh, reading the criticisms, uh, there is a lot of substance in them. Um,
But of course, uh, I, I think one of those uh, that, that, that wrote uh, the, 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 the articles uh, went overboard and went to the, the extent of basically saying, uh, you know, we, 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 we cannot even think. And uh, I, I, I would be surprised if the commissioners sitting here and listening to me speak from the morning can ever have the impression that I cannot think. I would be, I would be very, very surprised. But that one uh, <coughs> academic went so far as to, as to say that. And in fact, he goes so far as to say, we do not even care to think. Uh, and and, and uh, is this as a result of Kijima or is it because of all the judgments that I have written? If that was the case, can people who live closer to what we do, like the organized profession, the BLA has written a glowing report about me. If I couldn't think, I don't think they would have done that. Nadell has written a, 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 a lengthy comment, glowing, laudatory comment about me. The same with the GCB. They have written, I mean, they itemize, I think they say we're going to discuss each candidate under nine topics. I think from the beginning, first topic, all the way to the ninth topic, all the things that the GCB says about me are positive. Uh, so, yes, we all do mis make mistakes. But to then say, ah, those people cannot even think. That's nothing but, uh, you know, just gratuitous insults. I will accept that I do make mistakes and I will accept that even some of my other colleagues do make mistakes. Justice Madame, yes. may I just correct this lady yeah. that I may not have come across as clear. Yeah. I, do not, I didn't understand yes. Acting yes. President uh, Peter's okay. question to be about you personally. It, it was a general question about the standard uh, I understood quality. you. I yes. understood oh, okay. you. I understood you perfectly. I just chose to make it about myself because you said, am I not aware perhaps? And I say, I have read academic comment, academic criticism on my judgment in Gijima. And uh, th there's a lot of substance. There's a lot of substance in it, you know. So I, I guess indirectly that, uh, that answers your question. And, uh, and I chose to use my own judgment instead of going to other colleagues' judgments. I guess just to follow up uh, on and, that. And I'm not necessarily saying, oh, yes, I'm, uh, I was wrong, so that colleagues can then come and overrule me. I'm not. All I'm saying, I put it no higher than saying there is a lot of substance in the criticism. Yeah. Thank you, Justice Matlanga. And, and I guess the, the question comes in a context of the position of a Chief Justice who will be responsible for the judiciary. And in relation to criticism of that nature, how do we resolve those issues so that there is certainty in relation to judgments that come from our courts? I will, I will, say, I will say we will never, and not in a single country, we will never reach that level, Commissioner. For as long as we are human beings, we are fallible. And uh, yes, fine, we are an apex court. And, uh, and then people may say, if, if even you can be wrong, what then? But we are only human. We are fallible like uh, anybody else. And the world over, in all jurisdictions, one can never be able to say that other courts in uh, other apex courts in other countries never get it wrong. It just does not happen. That's an impossibility. Thank you, Justice Malanga. My, my, second, my second and last question, uh, uh, Justice Malanga. When asked um, about your uh, experience uh, uh, in leadership, you, 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 you gave a very lovely summary of what a role of a leader in any institution would be, and you did it twice. The first one was uh, 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 you determine where you want to take the institution, uh, and if it's an existing institution, if there are problems, what the solutions would be, and then implement. It, I would like you, in a way of almost like a closing remark, 
you would be, uh, 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 were you to be appointed, taking over the role of the judiciary, the head of the Constitutional Court and the chairperson of the JSC, I would like to hear from you what in, where would you like to take the judiciary, the Constitutional Court, the JSC, just on that summary. Uh, what uh, are the priority problems? Uh, what would be the solution and how you would implement it? In a summary, I want to be able I, to leave yeah. here and, and having gotten that from you, yeah. and when we deliberate, I'm able to get that, if you don't yeah. mind. Thank you, Ch Justice Madam. Yes. Uh, uh, um, as I said, for me, the, the, there is a large, large, large elephant in the room in the constitutional court itself. And uh, my vision, and this is important to me because the constitutional court is the apex court. Um, my vision is to have a constitutional court that is running like a well-oiled machine, uh, d delivering, finalizing new applications on time, uh, delivering judgments on time in accordance with uh, whatever <clears throat> timeline we will agree to. As I said, I have suggested five or six months to colleagues. I hope they will accept that or whatever they settle on. What we agree to should be what we try to live by. Um, <clears throat> um, also, I did touch on uh, the delays and uh, and uh, in, no, 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 in, uh, not just the constitutional court, but the broader context of the judiciary as a whole, you know, trials taking long to, to one matters to come to trial, uh, both civil and criminal. Um, and case line, no, 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 not case lines now, but uh, the case flow management uh, process has uh, uh, made uh, or introduced or brought about uh, great changes uh, in that regard. So one would uh, just have to, to look more closely and, at that and see what needs to be done. Uh, maybe introduce improvements or whatever else, just to make sure, sure, sure that uh, uh, there are lesser and lesser delays in the, in the process. Um, and of course, there is the question of court online, um, which is only going to be implemented after the second stage of the pilot project in Gauteng. And a, a, a Chief Justice coming in will have to, to preside over the, the rollout of that. And also, and also um, some of... Uh, the, the, of the judicial officers are not uh, computer savvy themselves, you know, and uh, they, they may have a resistance to this notion. And I doubt that just because of COVID, uh, there has been a take, uh, take up by all judicial officers. One would have to, to sell the idea. Let me again give a quick, quick example by myself. I was forced by this organization to, to go or online. When I came to JSC meetings, I used to pull a huge suitcase like this. And why I stopped, I used to pay a lot of money. I could not pass on that. Uh, I felt guilty. I could not pass that uh, charge to the JSC. I used to pay a lot of money to, to SAA. Then I was forced to use my computer and to use paper online. So we can easily find ways of making colleagues buy in and for this project to be a success. But one would also have to find ways, as I emphasized earlier, that this is acceptable, accessible rather, to a certain um, uh, component of our society, but it is inaccessible to other components. One would have to find ways of making sure that it, it, it works for them as well. For example, I gave the example of why not take a virtual court closer to the places where people live, not have a physical structure, no. Within the available resources, for example, have a screen and uh, have people testifying in Protea, but there are cases, actually a high court case 
uh, in, in, in Johannesburg. Again, a crass type of case, that is the, the, the United States case I referred to. Somebody, an old lady, an old, old man who lives with grandchildren um, uh, and all the, the income they have is the old age, uh, the social grant. And to say, travel every day to downtown Johannesburg to give evidence every day is quite a toll on somebody like that. Whereas if all that they have to do is go to a, a court in Protea and uh, listen to proceedings or, or watch proceedings and even participate in proceedings through a screen set up somewhere closer to where people live, you know, one could come up with a whole lot of... Uh, um, innovations to make justice truly accept, uh, accessible and to make Section 34, access to court, uh, meaningful for uh, our people, in particular our vulnerable and poor people. Thank you, Acting President. Thank you, Justice. Thank, Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Tsepe. Commissioner Matolo Depo. Uh, uh, thank you, Justice Mazala. I think in the morning, I think earlier, you, you expressed your vision if you were to be appointed as the Chief Justice. And fortunately, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is about you explaining about the access to justice issue especially the self-representing litigants, but at least I think you have done it just now. But then the, sec the other one that I think you, I need clarity on is the high cost of litigation, especially when we have SCs in this room, you know? And, and how, how do you think we can deal with it? You know, and the lastly, the use of mediation. I just want a better explanation of the two. How what is your vision regarding that? Um, one can only think about ways of uh, re re reduction, but not reduction of uh, council's fees. Uh, I cannot see how I can <laughs> possibly, you, you, all commissioners will probably see the direction in which I'm looking. <laughs> one cannot <laughs> even begin to think about uh, saying to council, please don't charge X amount of money. I think uh, it would more be, you know, uh, there are clients who would uh, have a, a clout in that regard. Um, what could happen is rather more, you know, issues that could cut down on costs. Like, for example, I think the very idea now of hearings that on a relatively large scale have taken place online should in itself cut down on costs. I said I traveled all over the country, you know, my, my practice. Uh, imagine the, 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 the disbursements from the traveling costs, the hotel costs, and maybe you are sometimes there for a whole week all of that gets passed on to the poor litigant. But now, council, one will be in Cape Town, another one in, in Durban, and so on. There will be no such disbursements. So maybe there is a need for, as part of, as part of you know, this uh, 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 the revamping the systems and pushing for an online system that will redound hopefully to the benefit of the ordinary person in the street. But of course, as I said, there's always the problem of accessibility and so on and so on. But maybe with a serious application of the mind uh, solutions can be found. Uh, I did give the example of the one, the one possible uh, solution that I gave. But uh, the very idea, the very you cut out the disbursements, 
and uh, you are basically left with uh, the, the legal fees, you know, consultation fees, uh, fees for, for arguing in court and so on. And, uh, and, and, and those disbursements are not an insignificant amount. I think the second one is the use of mediation. I think you said oh. it should exclude judges, uh, if I'm not wrong. Just how do you say it? Uh, it, or it, it was, it was, yeah, the, the, the point I was making was more that uh, um, if it is used more and used effectively, matters that do not really have to be litigated, um, the, the, the process may hopefully have the effect of taking them out of our system and therefore assisting the courts to focus better on those matters that truly have to be, to be litigated. That would be the, the benefit to the court system. And my understanding from the article that I referred to, penned by Deputy Judge President Roland Sutherland, uh, is that uh, this is not used optimally at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Excellency Judge President. Thank you, Commissioner Matolo Jepu. <clears throat> Just, just, just is my I'm very sorry. God. I, I whispered something. I was saying, I was saying, I, I would. I, I heard you, you heard Justice Matlam. So, yeah. so I think maybe. I hope, I hope this will not be a meme. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we should uh, then take just a five minutes, five minutes uh, comfort break. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you.
Fellow commissioners, will you please resume your seats? We are still left with about 11 members of the commissions. I would appeal to the remaining uh, commissioners to try and adhere to their allocated time. And once more, Justice Matlanga, please keep your answers short. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Shabangu Mdawe. Thank you, Acting President. Uh, good afternoon, Justice Malanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, Justice, I think 98% of my questions have been covered by the fellow commissioners. Thank you. But I only have two that I want clarity on. Access to justice, uh, it's very close to my heart. From what you have already alluded at, do you have any idea as to how can you improve on that so that even a woman who is somewhere in, in Buzini or Kamshabushangene can be able to access justice. Someone who doesn't even have a screen, the one that you have made example on, as to how can they access justice on. Can I also just throw in the second one so that you can be able to answer it as one, so not to waste time. There's a concern from the GPV activists you spoke about sexual offences. The concern is that the cases on sexual offences took time or take time to be heard in courts, be it lower courts and high courts. How can you, as the Chief Justice, assist that those cases are speedily heard so that they can give closure to the victims? Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner, um, you, you, you refer to a person from an area that I think uh, is like my own rural area. I'm uh, born and raised in a rural village outside uh, or some kilometers out of uh, a rural town. Um, and you, 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 you instance a situation where this person does not have a, a screen and uh, you are referring to my example. My, 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 my example was attempting to uh, make the point that the, 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 the screen should not be that of the person concerned. Uh, the idea was more that that person you are referring to, because sometimes there can be really long distances between, say for example, the area you are referring to and the seat of the court. 
Say, for example, it's a, it's a high court. There are usually even longer distances there. At least with district courts, there will be a district court in the town uh, where the person lives, even if they live in a rural area outside of the town itself. So for that person to travel all the way from some rural area outside of Peter Maritzburg, so my idea of the screen was that the screens which are not or should not belong to the people, but the screens be brought closer to where the people are at state expense. But of course, you and I know that uh, the, 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 the idea of resources, especially now, will be, will be thrown back at us. But, but the idea, that is what the, the idea is. And Commissioner uh, uh, Singh said, if something must be done, to make sure that our judicial system works, you know, funds just must be found somewhere. And uh, one hopes that, uh, you know, uh, because it is parliament that votes uh, funds, so one hopes that, uh, you know, with uh, ideas like those and uh, uh, parliamentarians speaking as parliamentarians and uh, pushing each other, uh, the resources can somehow be found. If that will materialize, I, I do not know. Um, I will not lie and say that I am at the moment as I sit here know whether there are specialized courts that deal with uh, sexual violence or offenses involving sexual violence. But an idea that I have, in case there are no such courts, there is no reason why, just in the same way that uh, in the big centers you have a specialized commercial court, there is no reason why you cannot have specialized criminal courts that deal with cases of this nature. And the hope, of course, being that there will have been no holdups at the investigative stage. And then once a matter lands in the hands of the specialized uh, uh, sexual offenses court, it gets dealt with um, expeditiously. And, 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 and the advantage of that also would be once the court is a specialized court. There is going to be, or, or, or rather, expertise is going to grow within that court and that will add to its efficiencies. Thank you, Justice. Thank you, uh, Thank you President. Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Shabangu Ndawe, Professor Schlemmer. Thank you, Acting President. Justice Matlanga, when you spoke about your vision, you indicated that you are concerned about the commercial cases that go on arbitration. Um, you answered questions on the quality of the judgment of the Constitutional Court. And if you'd read the news, you would have realized and remembered also that during the interviews last year in April, that we spoke a lot, or maybe I did, a lot about the scholarliness of judgments and the reasons for that was eventually also indicated as a lack of funding due to the fact that researchers cannot be appointed to all the high courts or enough researchers. So all of this leads to the one question that I have, and that is that there seems to be a problem concerning some of the judgments and the quality of some of the judgments. How do you foresee, if you were to be appointed as the Chief Justice, to address these matters? Not only in, this, in the Constitutional Court, but more broadly, because I think the, the issue is way, way broader than at the Constitutional Court. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it is a great pity that uh, I, I would want to take this, not just one, but many steps back. Judicial, judicial education, w without in any way um, expressing a vote of no confidence in it, by no means, 
because if I did not have confidence in the process, I would not myself have participated in it. I gave the example for, of, 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 of participating in seminars at judicial education. But judicial education can only do so much. If, if you have not been exposed to a very large extent during practice to uh, various areas of the law. Yes, I did say, and I will not contradict myself, that if you apply yourself seriously enough, even at the level of the judiciary, you, it is possible it is quite possible to catch up and reach a level at which you can deliver judgments that are at an acceptable level. Uh, but, but it may take time for you to reach that level. And going to a seminar over one week cannot really have the same effect that growing up as a practitioner that is exposed to sufficient work, you cannot grow uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, with those one week there, one week there. You will not grow in the same way that you would have grown as a practitioner. When you have grown as a practitioner and you have the right level of experience, you, to use the, 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 the hackneyed term, you hit the ground running, as it were, and you are able to, to do everything. But as I say, I want to emphasize, I'm not going back on the point I made earlier. So this goes back to an issue that in some ways may be outside of the hands of the Chief Justice, the briefing patterns, which is a systemic perennial problem. We need to have our people exposed to work at the right point, which is practice. There are various stakeholders. I touched on that and I said that to the extent that I may be able to, I am quite willing to also play a role and engage all the role players in that regard. Let people grow at the level of practice. That's the best way you can cut your teeth. And by the time you get to the bench, you, 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 you are ready. That would go some way towards eliminating uh, some of the problems that you refer to, Commissioner. I agree 100% with you. And on that note, if you had a choice to change the way in which judges are appointed, what would you do? You. <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very difficult one, uh, Professor. Um, um, I think, as I did in response to another question, uh, from one of the commissioners that side. It's something that I would, uh, if appointed, it's something that I would have to apply my mind to, one, would that be necessary, and two, if it is necessary, what route should we go? Um, I, I will not pretend that it's something that I have thought of. I have not. The reason why I'm asking this question is one often hears that people say, that the JC does not always have the interest of the judiciary in mind or properly in mind when recommendations are made for the appointment of judges. What is your take on that? Mm. <laughs> when I said here, I, 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 I thought we, we did. And, uh, and uh, you will recall, uh, Earlier, I said I, I, I hardly ever watch the proceedings. Um, it would be just uh, glimpses here and glimpses there of, of what happens during the, during the processes here. Um, so it, it's very difficult not having seen how um, candidates before you perform 
for me to be able to say, no, nah, they should have taken candidate A instead of candidate B. That, 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 that's very difficult for me to say. But I am willing to say, when I was part of this body, uh, 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 I believe we did. And by saying that, by saying at the time I said here we did, that is not at all a pronouncement that at the moment the, 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 the JSC is not uh, necessarily doing that. Uh, uh, a lot does turn on what happens here. Because sometimes you may know somebody to be a very good lawyer in terms of forensic skills and so on and so on. But once people come here, a lot more gets asked about you know, issues that uh, are considered to be relevant and the people may come short on, uh, on some of those things. And because I, 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 I never, as I say, except for, for short glimpses, watch what happens, what questions people get asked, it's difficult for me to, to, to pass judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Chi. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Slema. Thank you, Professor Slema. Commissioner Nogiesi. Thank you, Acting President. <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, Judge Malanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner Nogiesi. I, I just want to start on the very point that, that everybody has asked you about, this issue of leadership. In Mtata, I mean, in the Transkei Division, as it was then called, you presided over six judges. In fact, you were the six judges. There were five, you were the six judges then, yeah. when you were the acting president in that division. And uh, you outlined what uh, you have to do as the acting judge president of the division. That's what you just shared with us. Oh, oh I think I should share. Yeah, that's what you, you just shared with oh, us, oh, yes, what, what yes. it is that you yes. have to do as the yes. acting uh, president yes. of yes. that division. Yes. But this is what, to me, is more important, which you don't share. Yes. You became the judge in 1996, that yes. is your first appointment. Yes. It is at the time when there is a tension. There are few black, you were one of the few, first few black judges that are appointed into the bench. And if you calculate from that 96 to the time when you are appointed as the acting judge president, that experience is what we would like you to share with us because we would like to see how you integrated into the new system where you bring all these judges together, how that enhanced your leadership as a judge, as a leader. As a leader. Um, I, I, I must say that uh, I, I, I came in uh, in the footsteps of uh, Judge uh, President yeah. Somialo. Yeah. And so I think by the time that I, I, I came in, the court was uh, an integrated court and uh, the relations uh, were good amongst uh, all colleagues. In, in fact, I think we were quite uh, fortunate even when I came in and uh, uh, the leadership was, uh, was still uh, a white colleague, uh, Judge President uh, Beck. He, he, if I could use the term, he, he in fact had uh, literally used this uh, <laughs> unusual term. In a sense, one could say he had headhunted me, as it were. And uh, relations were quite cordial. So to come closer to what you're asking, um, 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 everything ran smoothly, and it was easy for me to, 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 to bring in whatever innovations I wanted to bring in. Everything was accepted uh, easily. Yes. Um, <clears throat> in the period just before 1994, that is before the, the elections, first elections, when you have no black judges. Um, <clears throat> what is clear to me is that black people in particular, and to be specific, a practitioner such as yourself, have a decision to make. That is, 
which we are either on the side of the people, that is the black, the oppressed majority in the country, the black people, or for convenience, for your own convenience, you are part of the oppressive system. And from the list of people that we work with, Square, Murane, all those that were resisting the system. Mm. To me, how would you not categorize mm. such decisions as leadership on their own? Because we had a choice to simply say, oh, well, mm. I'm a lawyer, I can just concentrate on my leadership. Mm. But now you make a conscious decision to mm. say, I align with the oppressed people, and the, it was not fashionable at the time, we were very few to take such decisions. Yes. How you jump uh, that yes. you don't count as part of your leadership? Yes, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I guess uh, I came in uh, at a time when the sort of cases they did, you know, um, were, were towards the tail end, but uh, I did get involved in a few. For example, um, you, you, I'm sure you know because he's your homeboy, Leonidas, uh, commonly known as Leo Katula, mm. who was uh, killed by security operatives uh, close to years. Yeah. Years. I represented uh, his family yeah. when they instituted a dependence claim against the government. Mm. Also, there is the well-known case of um, P, uh, the children of Mr. Bendulo. Yes. The children of Mr. Bendulo who were gunned down uh, at Northcrest in Umtata, uh, again by security operatives. Yeah. And the floor was just all blood throughout. Uh, there as well, there as well, I, 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 I represented uh, the Bendulo family um, briefed by Uputumisa Tsebeza. You know how strong he is, but when we consulted, Uputumisa was almost in tears. So, even though I came in uh, at, at the tail end, I, I did get involved in, uh, in those sort of cases. Yes. Yes. Now, I see from your Although, scene... Although, of course, I never went to the stage of the yeah. trial, but I drafted uh, the particulars of claim in the Mpendulo case. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see in your CV, as part of your reference, this is what you write. You write, uh, your first reference is former Chief Justice P. N. Langa, uh, former Chief Justice of South Africa, and then this is what you write. Although he has since departed, I cannot bring myself to delete him. Call me sentimental. Can you explain what is, what, why is, you felt it important that you make reference or you include as one of your reference Chief Justice, former Chief Justice A. Um I am uh, in the comfortable position that uh, the, the, the references are, are never used, but even if they were, I doubt that I would remove Ikamalga Putpayas from there. That is all to translate that I would remove uh, Putpayas' name from there. Uh, I think, don't I have three references? Yeah, you do. I could, I could live with the two, but mm. still keep his name on there. Mm. Um, Turned. Mm. <laughs> turned. I, 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 I was close to the man. I liked him. I liked him. And I just, as I say there, I just could not bring myself to deal once he passed on. Because I put him on there even before he became Chief Justice. Mm. And he has stayed on my CV forever. I, and I will keep his name on there until I die. Just to me, this is very important. You mention when you deal with some and, and, other... And maybe, if I could add, mm? I actually, the circumstances in which yeah. I met him were yeah. actually the same context that you referred to, and I quoted these other two cases. Mm. It's just that I forget the case name in this one, but that too was a security-related matter in which he and I were representing two witnesses. He was representing his own witness, and I was representing a witness the so-called recalcitrant witnesses, you know, witnesses who would not testify and therefore 
you as an advocate would have a watching brief. Mm. That's where that's where we he and I first met, and yeah. then we continued uh, interacting thereafter. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. That uh, since 1994, amongst the present uh, justices, not only in the Constitutional Court currently, even some, but correct me where you are wrong, I'm wrong. You are one of the few that have worked with uh, Ishmael Mohammed, work with Pius Langer, work with Ata Chaklasen, work with uh, all these chief justices. You, you can just tell us if which of the chief justices that you have not worked with, but as I understand, you have worked with all of them. Yes. And, and when you answer that question, could that be divorced to succession planning, exposure, understanding where we're coming from, the approach in terms of setting up this new constitutional dispensation? I would say uh, the, the, the exposure to, 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 to several and different uh, leaders at that level certainly um, does add something to, to one's own outlook on the leadership of the, of the, the judiciary. Mm. Yes. Um. I'm sure I'm left with two minutes out of my minutes I chair. Um, the, the point I'm, uh, <coughs> I would like also to draw your attention to is, um, in fact, we have dealt with this question. I must go to the next question. Um, this issue of judges calling for press conferences to answer matters that uh, they find uh, objectionable. Perhaps I, if, if you don't feel comfortable with that question, because I think I will deal with, with other candidates, you can, tell, you, you can say so. But my point is, the calling of press conferences by judges to respond to political rhetorics and statements which they perceive to be attacks and criticism, how would you respond to it, if, if you can? Um, I attempted, Commissioner, to deal uh, fairly at length with the... Uh, oh, 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 yeah, well, I guess you are, you are teasing out just the question of a press conference yes. now, specifically. Yeah. Um, I think I actually did allude to that question when I said, yes, the one approach could be the one of approaching the two leaders of the two arms of state, um, approaching each other and talking. And then I said, on some learning that I have had the advantage of going through, a point is made, and I think I do share it, a point is made that there may be times, as, uh, there may be times when somebody who is at a certain level within the judiciary, and that for me speaks to the leader of the judiciary, may have to respond. Take a situation, for example, where you try to reach out to the leader of the other arm of state. And you see that things are going exactly the way that, that Justice Mohammed says they shouldn't go. Exactly the way that uh, Justice Krikla in Mamabulo warns against. And then you try to reach out to the leader of the other arm of state and you are met with resistance or, or um, the leader just says, I will not see you at all. Or if they see you, they say there's nothing I'm going to do about that. What do you do? Do you then throw your hands up in the air and do nothing and let the public be believe whatever they want to believe in an instance where something does have to be done? But I want to emphasize, and I did say this before, I am by no means advocating a situation where day in and day out we would be running to the media, not at all. 
but there will be, and it is quite conceivable, there will be the odd occasions when that may be necessary. This is my last question now. The question is only on this. You have exceeded your but time allocation oh, oh, by I, 10 minutes already. Oh, I, it says that I thought it's only the 10th minute now. Can I with your leave just ask please, this question? Please pose your question, question. Uh, Commissioner. Thank, yes. thank, thank you, President. Thank you. I, I just want this question because this question on transformation has been asked by everyone. Would you agree with me that in this country, blacks and sorry, banks and big business, they are advocating for, for racism. They hate black practitioners. Would I be correct to make that conclusion that big banks, business, actually advocate for, for, I mean, for racism? Because they are the people who don't want to brief black practitioners and women. In all their cases, you can take from at the SCA Constitutional Court, if the case that involves them, they simply don't brief black practitioners and black women. Mm. Is that not racism me, or how me. best we can describe it? <laughs> uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Nochesi, the, the reality, the reality is is that I did say take Mtata for example there are banks there as well there were banks and I think the only bank that briefed uh, black people was what was on York Road yes TNBS um, and then the the, the the big banks did, did not um, so the reality is that uh, I mean uh, Whatever tag you want to give it, they 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 obviously one prefer to take the work, to take their money to people who look that like them, and look like them. That is uh, who owns the banks. Um, that is the that is the reality of 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 of, of our situation, and it explains why. Yes, there was a little bit of commercial work in Mtata. It explains why I was, uh, I was never, never exposed to that. And it can only be on the basis that those who have the money and preponderantly in South Africa, it is white people. Those who have the money will take their money to, 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 to their own people. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <laughs> Largely, largely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. Commissioner Nakesi. <clears throat> Commissioner Klaba. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Acting uh, President, and uh, good afternoon, uh, Justice Malanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just want to go back to the question that um, Judge President uh, le uh, raised earlier on and uh, also touched on by uh, my colleague uh, who just came before me. But I want to broaden it. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's the traditional approach to um, the traditional approach that says that um, uh, judges speak through their judgments um, <clears throat> in the context where there is now a temptation by some within the judiciary uh, to contribute to the um, ongoing uh, debates under the rubric of uh, freedom of uh, speech. And um, 
<coughs> what is your take on that? Um, yeah. Commissioner, I have attempted to deal with uh, that one at, at, at length at the beginning and I think there was also a follow-up question on it. I'm, I'm not trying to duck it and, and then again, uh, Commissioner um, uh, no, Jesse engaged me quite extensively on, 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 on it. I, I don't think I have anything to add, uh, really. Uh, with your respect, uh, Justice, yes. I, I thought yes. that was confined only to press uh, statements. Oh, yes. um, press statements. I'm just talking generally. Yes. The principle that judges speak through their judgments and the temptation uh, of uh, senior judges to contribute uh, uh, to the uh, issues of the day. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no the, yeah, the, I hear you now, Commissioner. My apologies, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> to that one, I would say, Commissioner, um, the issues that I say may actually call for a response from the judiciary um, and which and on which I said the approach or possible approaches are two pronged um, sometimes do not relate to court going matters so there will be at times there will be no judgment to speak through, as it were. Yes, sometimes criticism may come up as a result of a judgment that we may have given. And uh, in those instances, I, I, I do not see why a judge would want to go uh, speak and try to say, no, actually, this is what I meant and why. Because it's in the, judge, it's in the judgment itself. But there are those instances where um, the criticisms, um, the minister added attack or attacks not, 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 not may, be, may be relating to issues that have nothing to do with judgments. No, no, the, so, sorry, yes. just, to has, uh, just to assist uh, uh, Justice, yes. uh, I'm just talking it in general. Uh, please don't confine it to the attacks. Is judges wanting uh, um, judges entering into a political discussion to to an extent, in some cases, of contradicting government policy or policy of the country? May, may I? I think now I get the idea. <laughs> I get an idea of what you are probably alluding to. May I ask to duck that question and put it no higher than the level of principle which I think I have already addressed because, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, because what I think you are alluding to is something that I think is a litigious matter. And as a sitting judge, I would prefer not to speak to it. So I am quite comfortable addressing issues in general terms, and I think I have tried the best I can to do that. But, but let me say this. Let me say this. The code of conduct, the code of conduct, and I thought I did touch on this earlier, when, 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 when uh, was it Justice Kaletsi was, uh, was, was uh, asking me, uh, the code of conduct does say judges should not involve themselves in political controversies. The code of conduct does say that. And you will remember, Commissioner, that is when I then made the lengthy attempt at explaining how we nonetheless will still get involved in political issues, but in the process of the adjudicative process. And then I said, I did say that,
But once you stray outside of the adjudicative process and meddle in political matters, that's when you may then transgress the code of conduct. I did say that. I am willing to stand by that. That I will not duck. But it, it was more the, <laughs> a feeling that you may be alluding to something specific, and uh, which is something litigious that I say perhaps is I, I, I hope at least at the level of principle, yes, 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 we should not meddle in political controversy. I say that categor categorically. Thank, thank you very much, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Judge, yes. you've, you've answered me. Uh, <clears throat> you, you are selling us a vision, and uh, you further state that um, the, the period remaining uh, in the bench does not count against you being appointed uh, to the position for which you have applied, the position of Chief Justice. Now, don't you think that um, the, 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 the short term uh, uh, will make your vision a nearly impossible uh, fit uh, and, and two may not contribute much to the stability of the court. I'm sorry that I have to belabor, belabor the point, but I thought I should raise this as a parting shot yes. because it will exercise the mind, the minds of the uh, uh, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, I, I will uh, also, in a sense, be, be belaboring <laughs> my, 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 my response. Um, I, I gave the, the example of me acting as a judge president for, I think, was it about a year? And within that year, bringing in innovations, and I gave you a tangible example of what I came up with, with tangible results, a year. Um, I also gave the example of somebody that is well known to this august body. I'm sure, I mean, if I sat down, scratch my head hard enough, I could easily come up with more. And I gave the example of, uh, of, of Judge President Beninga, who within a year was able I, I, I will not say that uh, the Eastern Cape Division was a horribly performing court, no. But he took it from whatever level it was at and took it high up to one of the better performing divisions in the country, again within a year. And I think some of the results of that are quite visible even to this august uh, 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 body and uh, I hope I will not cause resistance for him in future when he comes here because uh, he and I are quite close and I do know I do know that uh, by and large he even manages in this august body to 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 one he, 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 he is able because of how he can identify talent, make, or of course it's the minister who makes the appointments, recommend appointments, and then have people acting. He is able to bring to this august body the sort of talent that by and large this august body has found acceptable. But that's just one facet. That's just one facet. Overall, he has made that division one of the better performing divisions, and he did that within a year. So three years, I repeat categorically, Commissioner, three years is a very long time. The entity that I said I ran, and I quoted from you, the very laudatory, the very praiseworthy um, um, words by uh, Deputy Minister um, Jabu Mulekedi about how I led that entity. That was what, it was around three years. Starting it from an empty floor. 
three years, I repeat. And, and if I could rattle off the figures, we are talking tens and tens of billions of rand that were exposed to the country, increased the tax base, and so on and so on, within a few years. Now, let me quickly, uh, please forgive me, uh, Acting President, let me also say something that I think, without at all suggesting that people who have longer terms, for example, uh, colleagues coming in would have 12 years as Chief Justice. If, if at the level of principle or policy, whatever tag may be given to it, it were ever to be said, for somebody to be appointed Chief Justice when they are left with only three years, six months, at the level of principle, that should not be done. That would send a very bad message. It would mean that senior judges at the Constitutional Court should forget about ever becoming Chief Justice. Somebody coming in having 12 years, even people who would come in, say, two, three years after the Chief Justice who has 12 years, and then the Chief Justice leaves. They would be, those people would be the most senior at the court when the Chief Justice leaves. The Chief Justice was there for 12 years. They will be the most senior and they will be in exactly the position in which I am here today. And they will be told that you are left with only three years. Forget about ever becoming Chief Justice. That would send a bad, bad message. By saying that I should not be misunderstood. I am not saying that somebody should not be appointed from another court and if they are of a young age and therefore can serve the 12 years, should not come in and serve the 12 years as Chief Justice. I am not saying that. All that I am arguing against is an idea that three years, six months is all that is left for you, forget about it. That will send out a very terrible message. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, follow up, uh, Justice Ma Langa. Follow up on that. Uh, uh, I'll defer to you, otherwise, I had a follow up. Uh, okay. No, it's just on that uh, point. I hear uh, Justice uh, Ma Langa, you are emphasizing three years, but I want to read that you don't really mean three years. You mean that six months, two days, two years. It doesn't matter. In my, One year. No, yeah. no, no, no. Let's focus on my three years, six months, uh, Minister. Please. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thank you. Justice Matana has a follow-up. I think at least you accept that you know some of the changes or innovations you might wish to introduce especially uh, um, which are momentous you know we have to go through you know long pipelines because uh, you know to 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 get to fruition because you would for example, need to get a buy-in from across the board. Um, would you accept that as a general purpose? I would say that could easily apply to the Chief Justice Langa served. Uh, and uh, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, what much difference is there, uh, Acting President Pence? between uh, three years, uh, six months, and, uh, and, uh, and, and four years. The difference is only six months, and uh, there was no problem at all with the Chief Justice Langer becoming Chief Justice. Um, but but, but uh, addressing the point of substance, 
the, the, those uh, problems that you allude to would, would really have to be uh, what close to insurmountable problems for, for them to, to take three years, uh, six months to resolve. Um, and uh, then I think that perhaps would more be a function of them not being seen as acceptable than a case of final, finality being reached on them. I hear you accept that former Chief Justice Lama was the only candidate uh, when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 but my, but my point stands, my point stands though, my point stands, my point stands because the person who does the appointment should have said four years is a very short period. Somebody does the appointment and if this is a factor, it should be a factor at all levels, not just with the JSC, it should be a factor um, with the person who does the appointment as well. Thank you, Justice Martin. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner thank Buff. You, thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Acting President. Uh, just another follow-up, Justice Malang, I, I, I would like you to answer this question more on on this issue of of the of the term. Just as the issue of leadership earlier, yeah. which, as you correctly pointed out, was raised in the media as. Um, a drawback, yes, yes. which you've really dealt with effectively, I think. This is also a, a question of a similar nature. And I think you should take cue from the last remark of the acting president. I said earlier to you that although you are all senior judges and you are all collegial and all that, but bottom line, this is a competition. Right? So this time it's a competition. It's not just one judge sitting there as it usually is. Yeah. There are other candidates and you must accept that when we ask you questions, we are mindful of the fact that there are other candidates. Yeah. <coughs> yes, yes, and yes. it's an opportunity for you to allay any fears that might be there. Let me try and explain it to you. It might well be that actually this is a, a neutral factor. But the reality is that some of the candidates will be able to serve for a longer period than you would if you were appointed. Yes. It's a fact. Yes. Um, and I think what the commissioners are trying to do is to give you an opportunity to convince us that, that when we do deliberate, we should not overemphasize this factor as a disadvantage uh, in your case, just as we should not overemphasize the fact that you have not had an opportunity to lead a court permanently for a long time or for as long a time as the other candidates. So the, 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 I would like you to deal with it frontally and um, explain to us why, for example, my own instinct would say, oh, well, if you're only left, let's use the minister's uh, example, with 18 months. That means in 18, 18 months' time, we must go through this again, just, you know, as a country of selecting a chief justice. On the other hand, it might well be that if you have somebody who's going to serve for 10, 12 years, let's say in the first six months we realized that we made a mistake, <laughs> <laughs> then we're stuck <laughs> with, that, with that person. So it's, it's, it's a serious matter that must be confronted. It's a reality. Um, and, and we need to be convinced that it is not something that should be a game changer. <laughs> I, I Thank you, Commissioner Mpofu. I, I, I did not want to to touch on the point you made uh, to, towards, my, towards the end. I did not want to make that point myself because it would sound uh, quite negative, but uh, <laughs> uh, 
as you say, these two, aside of uh, the idea that I lack uh, leadership, this too is out there in the public domain, you know, but he's left only, the six months is not even added, he's left only with three years. Uh, Sometimes it's even said two. <laughs> so, so, Commissioner, uh, I did think exactly what you just articulated, <laughs> articulated now, and there was no way I could articulate it, and I thought, mm, but what if, you know, the person who will serve 12 years then does not prove to be what you wanted. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not at all. I'm not, this is not at all casting You're not any saying aspersions it. against my colleagues, all of whom I respect, not at all. Uh, but uh, Commissioner Bofu, I, I may be repeating myself, but I, 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 I want to say that I took the question with a seriousness that I believe it deserves. It may at that time not have been raised, or in fact, I mentioned, uh, you know, my idea of the qualities of a leader in a different context. In fact, when I was exactly dealing with my leadership skills, I actually have those points on leadership skills, I have them under a flag here that says term. And I make the point that what a leader needs, again I say I'm repeating myself, but this is to show that I am taking it with a seriousness that you quite correctly say, you know, I should address it with. I say, I disagree that the term is short. Leadership requires a visionary. Someone who can identify A, where an institution needs to be taken, B, problems, and be able to come up with solutions. And then, implement immediately. But of course, as uh, the acting, acting president uh, correctly points out, implementation may be impacted upon by the responses that you get. But for that to go to, to three years, uh, 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 my mind says that should be in respect of what perhaps may be found to be unacceptable. So. If you have those qualities, you should be able, within a matter of days, months perhaps, and to the extent that I said if I am appointed, I will approach other heads of courts from the Supreme Court of Appeal to the District Court, get ideas from them as well. Once I have solicited or obtained all of that, reached decisions at the level of heads of course, I will push for implementation immediately. This, this, this is, all of this, Commissioner Mpofu, is something that can happen within a relatively short time. And if what you have identified under my A and B is something momentous, something concrete, and you are able to then create templates on it that should leave or, 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 or that should leave the judiciary with lasting templates to be used into the future even by your successors what is crucial is that initial stage that identification process both of where you want to go and also what problems do you identify and how do you solve them. That is the crucial stage. And then immediate implementation, immediate being relative in the sense that uh, who do you have to consult with. Um, and, 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 and those uh, in my book do not require years and years and years. 
I, I, I hope I have uh, answered you, Commissioner. You have. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Acting President, for the follow-up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Both of Commissioner Mapisan. No, I, I want to make a follow-up. Oh, I'm sorry, because Commissioner Malema. Uh, yes, you may proceed. Matlanga, you said something about the person who appoint would have made a consideration about three years and six months. I don't understand that comment. What do you mean by that? Oh, no, I was not uh, talking about my three years, six months. I, I made that point, uh, Commissioner, in the context of uh, it being put to me that uh, um, um, Commish, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Justice Langa was the was the only only candidate. So I yes. Then I said yes. Even so, even so, if the aspect of the length of the, the term is such a crucial aspect, then it should have uh, been something that should be at on the table even at that level. That that, that is what I meant. But Commissioner Mbofu makes a point that uh, we may appoint someone who has 12 years to go. Yes. And uh, in three months' time, we realize this person was a, a terrible mistake. An impression wants to be created here that we are going to put our, heads on our, our hands on our head. Is that not wrong? Because if we realize... In three months' time, six months' time, one year's time, five years' time, that we have appointed the wrong person. I don't know what's the wrong person. Are there no institutional mechanism to self-correct? Um, thinking of the CAF, uh, Commissioner Malema, um, you 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 you'd probably have have seen in the judicial uh, service act under the the disciplinary processes there um that um it is not everything that can lead to getting rid of a judicial officer so uh, i i think it is at that level Perhaps that uh, that Commissioner Mpofu would be raising uh, raising this um, um, at the level of leadership. Sometimes you may not reach a point where you say we must <laughs> short of short short of for a, a, a voting process, for example. You know, you you may not be able to reach a level at which you say. Let us get rid, rid of that, uh, that judge. And you know how in South Africa and in most countries, I believe, you get rid uh, of judges is through an impeachment uh, process. So there are certain, there may be certain shortcomings with regard to the level of leadership, which may fall far short of getting to, to, to that sort of level. No, I agree, Justice. All I want is South Africans to be assured whether those things get to be applied or not is something else. But in our judiciary, if a terrible mistake has been committed in the appointment of the judge, there are institutional mechanisms to correct that. It's, it's not a a hopeless situation that uh, 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 was stuck for 12 years as if there is no mechanism uh, because I earlier said I don't know what will be such a terrible mistake uh, that will all be like in six months Yo, this was a horrible mistake um, uh, uh, I don't know I'm trying to imagine that but if that happens there are institutional mechanisms to self-correct. Like you said, they might take long or all of that, it's okay, but we agree that there are institutional mechanisms where we can intervene if there is a, a terrible mistake with a judge appointed by this August House. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, 
Commissioner. Um, it is this, uh, this body that is, besides the recommendations that it makes in terms of uh, the, the Constitution, um, it is also the body that is also tasked with advising on matters that pertain to the judiciary. I guess in that context, in that context, it may maybe raise certain issues with the judiciary as a body because a chief justice is not the judiciary as a whole. So if an issue is about the judiciary, then this body may raise that with the judiciary as a collective, exactly on the basis that aside of recommendations on appointments, it also has the mandate to advise on issues pertaining to the judiciary. Of course, if the shortcomings are of a nature that falls within or what, a, what the Chief Justice may have to be disciplined on or about, then, then the, 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 that, has to, that has to be done as well. Uh, no, all I'm saying is that if, okay, let me talk about a Chief Justice. If a Chief Justice becomes a horrible mistake, like we once had with some judge there in Pretoria who said, it's still to see a black woman who's not raped by their uncles or something like that. A, a Chief Justice immediately after this, he says something like that. At the institute, despite the, the, still having 12 years, are the institutional mechanism to hold that Chief Justice accountable and decisive action taken against that Chief Justice? Or will be stuck with a Chief Justice who view black African women in the manner I described earlier on. No, 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 uh, uh, Commissioner, you, you do not have to be, you do, the, the, the Commission and the country, and the country does not have to be stuck with, uh, with somebody like that, especially, especially somebody you know, at, with transgressions at the sort of level that you give, or it may not be transgressions of that nature, but comparable transgressions the act is there. The Constitution provides for impeachment and at a certain level, that judicial officer, including a Chief Justice, may have to be or would have to be impeached. They are not above, one, the Constitution that provides for impeachment and two, the actual processes that are provided for in the Judicial Commission service. Act. A chief justice is not above those processes. Now, here we've got a candidate of 12 years, well qualified, well articulated. Uh, okay, let me leave it. I will, I will take it on my turn. Thank you. I, th I thought this was it, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Commissioner Mapisa Nagula. Thank you very much, Acting President, and, and thank you, uh, Justice Malanga. Thank you, Commissioner. Justice Malanga, somewhere in your questionnaire I read, the questionnaire which was you were provided with, where you provided answers uh, to the Commission, I read in question number 18, your response which says, the question was, what would you regard as your most significant contribution to the law and the pursuit of justice in South Africa? And your response to that was, and I won't read it, but I'll just cite what you are saying there. Amongst others, you are saying law does not coincide with justice. And, okay, you, you're now talking to a a peasant, somebody who was, who was very raw, and, and there are many others who, may have, who will come across your questionnaire and, and read what you have, how you have responded to the issues raised there. Then you go on to say, 
you use your instinct for what is just. And your instinct motivates you in the exercise of judicial function. Okay. Just clarify that to, yes. to ordin us ordinary South Africans. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a nuance, Commissioner, on the first part of what you said. Uh, you said the law does not coincide with justice. I, I, if I say so there, then I made a mistake and left out a, a word. What I think I said, and if I've not said it, what I meant to say was that law does not always coincide with justice. And then the point I am making about a natural instinct uh, within me and, 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 and which, which I believe guides me in the adjudicative process is an instinct that I feel is motivated by an innate sense of justice within me. And I believe that that assists me in those instances where law may not coincide with justice. Not just, I will again use my self-created adjective and say, throw up my hands in a palatial manner and say, that is what the law is. Yes, it is unjust, but because that is what the law is, I am not going to do anything about it. That innate instinct for justice motivates me to say, is all that we can do in these circumstances, why is this piece of law like this? Should it be like this? I will give a live example a judgment I wrote in the matter of Mukoni. Somebody, I think in Springs, running a small business in town, and she has a lease. And the term for extension comes, and the owner of the, the, the shop where she's running this business writes on, on this contract as it is across the face at the top, extended for whatever the period of extension was. And the lease agreement had what is called an option to buy. Now, when but then the owner sold to somebody else. When she, Miss Mukoni, tried to hold the owner to, and these were companies, the seller, owner, and the other company, when she says, no, 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 I want to hold you to this because there is an option here, then they said, there is an old law. No, 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 they didn't even say old law. There is a legal principle that says, if there is no specific indication that you are also an, e e e extending terms of a contract that are not essential terms of a lease agreement, those other or additional terms like an option would be, an option to purchase would be additional. Those additional terms that are not integral to a contract of lease, do not get extended. My instinct, my instinctive reaction to that was, uh -uh, it sounds like there's something wrong altogether in this. And I was allocated the judgment in that matter. I sat 
down, dug down. And I found a 1904, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere there, case. You know that some law we get from the Roman Dutch law, from English law, and so on, and it makes up what is called our common law. I found that 1904 case that we imported into South Africa, and that has been followed for all this time. But when I interrogated the judgment, I just did not find the, 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 the principle enunciated there convincing at all. Because it just said, sort of as a matter of legal principle, this is what it should be. And I said, no, 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 no. This is a contract. And with all contracts, you must interpret a contract. And that, should, that is what should determine the outcome. Not a position that is predetermined and which, in my view, is against the ordinary rules of how we deal with contracts. And I upset that old 1904 English legal principle. So the short point I'm making is, I was motivated by, in, in, no, 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 this just does not sound right. This just does not sound just. I hope it explains the point. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, but, but, but what I must clarify though is, I should not be understood to be saying that just because of this in instinct, I will always, always, and at all costs, try to find a way of getting around what the law says no. There will be those instances where the law is unjust and there is simply no nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. That's a very interesting one because <clears throat> actually I think maybe at some point you need to educate us. Now you are saying sometimes the law can be unjust. If, if the law is unjust, what do you do? It, it's, it's, a not, it's, a, it's a discussion for another day. Yes, yes, yes. Because at the end of it is that sometimes we become critical mm. of some of the decisions you take. Yes, yes. And when we are critical of yes. your decisions, yes. sometimes it is because we feel yes. that you, the judgments are unjust. And it could be instances such as mm. the one you've just mentioned that mm. sometimes the laws the law, the law yes. is unjust yes. now the <clears throat> the other thing i wanted just just to to raise is it's not a question it's just to caution your that same question 16.3 and 16.4 i noticed that both of them you responded in this manner you you actually you say your memory fails you. My memory fails mm -hmm. me, but one, the one case which I can remember, in the first one, which is 16.3, mm -hmm. you cite the case you remember, which is Ndambo versus Minister, Minister of Safety and Security. Mm -hmm. And then 16.4, you cite... Quetta, Quetta, I Quetta. think, yes. <laughs> yes. I think... If there were cases which were going to be mentioned, such as the ones you have mentioned, I personally would have preferred that you do not even say that, because that, um, the question doesn't say you should list all the questions. Once oh, you have cited the one, that in my I view, remember. yes, I think that oh. that is enough. I oh, think okay. it talks to the matter which was raised earlier on. You are here, whether you like it or not, to market yourself. And, and when we deliberate at the yeah. end of everything, we should be able to say, well, yeah. in, this, in this questionnaire, 16.3 is responded to in this particular manner. I, I would have mm. definitely, I, would, I don't mm. appreciate the, that the, you actually yeah. wrote that. Uh, uh, your memory yeah, I, I forget, that, does the question say uh, uh, that I remember? How, how it it I, says, I, please list cases in which you gave judgment that were unsuccessfully appealed yes, against, yes. not more than I, 10. I actually think, I actually think and, uh, Commissioner, uh, that even on another occasion, I would still answer that question that way. Because if I were just to say Quetta on the one, and then the, the, the other one on the, on the other, uh, what if, take, take, take what the GCP has done, for example, the extensive exercise it has done, dug into all judgments. Uh, uh, then I just say Quetta on the one question and that one, and then they dig up and say, look at what he's saying, this person is dishonest, 
we've come up with other decisions where his judgments were, were, were upset and yet he has not listed them. He gives, he wants to give the impression that this is all that was ever upset by an appellate court. So I was a judge at, at high court level um, in the, it's as good as the, the 90s because after that I acted in the Supreme Court of Appeal, the Constitutional Court, and uh, then very shortly, uh, also back in Mtata for a very short period, then I went back to practice, and then I came to sit at the apex court. So it would have been, you know, that very limited time, years and years ago, that the possibility of my judgments being upset on appeal would have been a factor at all. Now that I sit at the apex court, <laughs> no court can upset our judgments. So for me to be categorical, you know, with regard to years and years gone by, it would actually have been an error, Commissioner. So on any other day, I would still respond to that question exactly the way I have. Well, I, 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 hope I, I'm, thank I, I hope well, I'm clarifying. I've understood, yes. yes, yes. I do want to, I know it, my time is up now. Judge uh, Justice uh, Malanga, would you say South Africa is ready for a Chief Justice who's a woman now? I'm, I'm purely raising this, and I know this is a very sensitive yes, matter, very yes, difficult. Yes, yes. I'm looking at the list of Chief Justices we've had, Chakalsin, Langa, Ngobo, and Judge Mohue, and, and we are now post our democracy into our fifth Chief Justice. And I, I would want to raise this. Um, would you say South Africa is ready? And I want your honest answer to it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner, to that, let me say that uh, I know Justice uh, President Maya actually um, very well. I've known her from when we were we were students. Um, I've known her as a as a colleague. Um, she is a worthy colleague. She is a worthy lawyer, and uh, now she is a leader at a significant level in the. The, the judiciary, I would be dishonest to this august body if I were ever to try to, to take anything away from what I've just tried to, to highlight about her. Uh, um, that said, I would uh, say um, I would want to say, let me leave the final decision on that issue with this august body, but, but clearly and categorically making the um, acknowledgement that I have made and which I do not at all make grudgingly about my colleague, President. Thank you very much, Justice Madlanga. You've not answered my question, but acting president, I leave it at that because I did not ask about the other competitors. My question to you was, do you think, is it your view that South Africa is now ready to have a Chief Justice who is a woman? So the question was directed at refers to the country as you see it right now. Are we ready? And not so much on the candidate, one of the candidates who we are going to interview. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very you much, Commissioner. Thank you. Justice Madlanga, do you perhaps uh, need a second to answer directly to the question posed to you by I, Commissioner. I, I do not think I can take it further. Because I, I do not think I can take it further. I, 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 I go no further than to say that 
I leave everything else to, to this August body. Thank you, Justice Madlanga. Let me make a Commissioner. Let me make a follow-up, uh, Acting President. Please do. I think by the time we get yeah, to you, I'll you'll have done. exhausted your questions. <laughs> I'll be done because it looks like these questions are coming even before my turn. Um, I don't know, uh, Justice Madlanga, if you are doing yourself a justice. Because they are not asking you for an opinion of this body. They are asking you your opinion, saying... Do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice? It's not a question directed at should this body appoint a female justice? That's not the question. Um, and, and I liked the way you came earlier on about the LGBTQ community. What happened to that feminist about LGBT? Now that we are dealing with real stuff, the real character is showing up. Because the same stand you took on LGBTQ plus communities, the same stand we take on women. Because all of them are victims of masculinity and all the isms you were speaking about earlier on. It shouldn't be that um, now that you think you are being put at the corner, you compromise that which came across as your fundamental principles because we are going to doubt them. Now, let me ask the question again. Do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice, chief justice? Um, oh God, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, commissioners. I have a strange phone, which even if it's off, it is actually off. If I have an alarm, the alarm goes off even if it's off. I, I, I apologize, commissioners. And I don't know how to sort that out. <laughs> Maybe it's alarmed by the question. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, this you are bell, forgiven, this Justice bell, this, this bell, unlike in boxing, boxing is not saving me, Commissioner Maleva. <laughs> and and I had uh, expected this question um, from Commissioner Malema. And I, 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 I know how he, good he is with uh, what uh, the Americans call comebacks. That is, somebody says something and then you clap him. And uh, I had thought that uh, I would say to Commissioner Malema, but of course I was already thinking he would come with a very serious clap. I had thought, uh, Commissioner Malema, I'm actually looking forward to the next elective conference of the EFF. And I want, I want to see Commissioner Malema stepping back and saying, I'm now paving way for a woman commander-in-chief of the EFF. <laughs> Please don't come with, with your characteristic comebacks, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, towards the end of uh, your question you you said otherwise you may even doubt the 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 genuineness of the views uh, that i have expressed um, before answering the question um, um, let me say please don't and uh, and uh, and other commissioners as well and uh, and let me also say that it is not just, you know, talk. Uh, 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 it is there even in my judgments. For example, the Ponya judgment. For example, the Scribante versus Daniels versus Scribante. For example, the Mukoni judgment, where I came to the assistance of a poor, vulnerable woman. Um, so I do live by those. <clears throat> uh, so whatever happens, it should not be on the basis that you doubt the genuineness of that. Um, maybe let me just say, I, I will accept that. I will accept that. 
but um, say I have attempted to put myself forward as a, as also a credible candidate and uh, and leave it to this commission to exercise its mind as to who it con ultimately cons for for whatever reason for whatever other reason I have attempted to do the best I can in that regard but uh, but uh, perhaps let me just say I I accept that uh, uh, Justice uh, Madlanga the, the we are now looking for a, a Chief Justice. I think we'll later look for a, a CIC of the EFF at that time. <laughs> but for now, we are looking for a Chief Justice. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll enter that debate there's, at there's, that time. There's that comeback. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm worried, I'm, and, and I respect to DL. I mean, Dalu will tell you that you are one of the judges that even when you rule against some of us you do it in such a way that we we we, we come out of it learned educated and appreciating that we might have missed it here or there i mean you used to do it very well with uh, justice uh, jafta i'm told is is gone so the two of you every time you write judgment even when you disagree with us you know, it's so educative. It's, there's nothing that you feel personally attacked or anything of that sort. And, and um, you know, a lot of people support women until it comes to them. Yes. When it's done there, it's okay. Don't come close closer to the office of the CIC. Otherwise, <laughs> there's going to be a problem. But uh, on every platform, women must be empowered. Women this, women that. Is this not an opportune moment where you say, demonstrating practically beyond the issues of judgment where I'm not personally involved or affected by that. There are two parties. I'm not a litigating party. I'm making this judgment for these people they were before me. This is where I can practically make a demonstration of my commitment even before coming before this body and say to the president, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you have identified me as one of those people, but I think we need a female now. I mean, 30 years. It's going to be 30 years. There's never been a female chief justice. If anything, the judiciary has performed worse than us, politicians. Because we have had a vice president, uh, two of them who were uh, females as a country. But never did we have a chief justice or even a deputy chief justice who was a female for 30 years. Shouldn't we have reached a point where the male judges who always tell us and the justices who always tell us they support gender and all that, turn it to the president and say, you know what? We think now is time we get a female chief justice justice because we've been theorizing about it is this not an opportune moment where all of us who say we support females irrespective of us being identified as potential candidates say we think a female uh, can be achieved justice because i'm worried uh, justice madlang you know apart from you and you know we know that apart from you repeatedly saying you leave it to us you are struggling to say South Africa is ready for a female justice. But in this context, you will have to look at how we perform. Because we are ready, you can't argue that, but it's not coming out of your mouth. And that's what we are going to argue when we meet. That that commitment, that's what makes me now doubt the earlier commitment and the commitment in the judgment. Because a staunch supporter of this will not struggle to say, we are ready for a, a female a, a, a chief justice. If you were to ask me on the eve of 2024 uh, national elections, 
where I will be contesting and you say to me, Mr. Malema, don't you think South Africa is ready for a woman president? I will say it's ready. Because South Africa, it is ready for a, a, a woman president. So why should I, I, I be giving a long explanation instead of just coming out clearly and say, we are ready. We have, we have always been ready. We have led by different capable women in the judiciary. Uh, you are even made much better place to cite their names and, and, and say, but in this context, in, irrespective of what I've said, I'm here, I'm available, and let this body take a decision on what needs to happen. But I, I hear, and that's what worries me, acting president, I hear you struggling to commit that South Africa is ready to have a female chief justice. And, and that is really troubling me. I mean, let's leave the fact that there is a candidate who, who contest you or you are contesting each other in this. Because that candidate might come and perform badly. And you performed better. We'll still appoint you. But it doesn't rule the fact that South Africa is ready for a female chief justice. It might not be a Judge uh, uh, President Maya. And this process might prove that. I, I, I accepted the, the proposition, uh, Commissioner Malema. I accepted the proposition. Thank you, Commissioner Malema. And uh, thank you, um, Justice Madlanga, for that uh, direct response. Because this is what I was also going to take up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Commissioner Muimang, the moment that you released has now come. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Acting uh, President. Uh, a good, uh, good uh, evening, uh, Justice Madlanga. Good evening, Commissioner. Just uh, uh, one area that, 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 that I thought uh, I must converse with you, though it has three, three uh, sub-branches. <clears throat> uh, the issue of the composition of the, of the Corn Court, uh, uh, as I uh, alluded to earlier on, uh, in your uh, response, you, 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 you did indicate uh, the the lack of appointment of uh, white male judges in the, in the last 12 years. Am I correct on that? It, 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 that was not a point made by me. It was a question posed to me and it did not say male. It said uh, um, white colleagues on that bench and it was asked specifically in the context of section 174.2 and, uh, and then my response was, yes, there is a need for all the various categories of the South African um, populace to feel that the, the various levels of our judiciary uh, belong to them and to an extent I believe that uh, that is what section 174.262 address. Um, yes, of course, then I, I, I said quite a lot more than just that. Thank you. The, I think the issue of the, of the diversity, uh, it, it, it's a very important matter, and the, the progress that, uh, that the country has made, particularly the level of the of the of, of the concord and the superior and the supreme court of appeal i think uh, that progress must be appreciated <laughs> uh, don't you think that uh, we are being too hard on ourselves uh, i'll tell you why i'm raising this point the <clears throat> the uh, the president of, uh, of of the united states of america uh, <clears throat> I recently made a proposition that uh, uh, in replacing one of the, the senior judges whose term has come to an end, uh, 
uh, it is an opportunity for him for the first time to appoint a woman of color in the Supreme Court uh, in America. And uh, they say that it is, uh, it is uh, uh, for the first time in more than 232 years. Uh, that is the context with which I'm saying that are we not being too hard on ourselves? Particularly uh, taking from the point that we have raised around the importance of uh, a person's outlook in terms of approaching uh, the issues of transformation. And as a result thereof, uh, what comes to my mind is uh, the outlook of uh, uh, Chief Justice uh, Arthur Charles Carlson, uh, uh, Justice uh, Alvi Sachs, uh, Justice Didcot, uh, which uh, clearly to me says that uh, as opposed to, to the United States of America as a country, uh, we are doing quite well. Hence the question to you is, are we not being too hard on ourselves in terms of the transformation project on the judiciary? Thank you. I would uh, say, yes, we have done well, but uh, I, I will not go back on the, the, the concession I made uh, um, to, to, to the question put to me by, by Commissioner Malema. Uh, I would say we, 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 we have done far better because unlike uh, the, the, the United States of America in our apex court, we, we have a number of... Uh, of, 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 of women colleagues. Thank you. The, 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 the second leg of, 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 of my question on the composition. Uh, the issue of the term, uh, I know you have uh, uh, canvassed your views on the issue of the term, uh, but really with regard to whether it is four years or three years or is it two years. That is, that, the reason why I'm raising this point, just allow me to put my proposition yes, forward, yeah. uh, Justice Madanga. Uh, <clears throat> one of the, the angle uh, that, 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 that is also uh, in the public domain uh, around this process is uh, the, uh, the uh, the role of the judiciary uh, in the current administration. Uh, <clears throat> a concern is raised around uh, the sixth administration appointing judges in the last remaining years of the sixth administration. Uh, a point of, of emphasis being raised to say, if you appoint, if the sixth administration appoint judges when it terms, uh, comes to an end, <clears throat> uh, these judges that are appointed by the sixth administration, come the seventh administration, will they not exert influence in the new administration and uh, uh, exerting influence on two areas? Uh, the, the, the first one is uh, uh, in the seventh administration, uh, a potential of, uh, of, of, of these judges uh, perpetuating the understanding of the old thinking of the current sixth administration in the seventh administration on key matters of public interest. The, the second point uh, is the the, the, the temptation of uh, these judges that are appointed by the sixth administration in the seventh administration uh, using that opportunity to probably correct some of the doctrine uh, that uh, they might not have uh, done in the sixth administration. And uh, this is where an area of judicial activism 
comes from. So I want to get uh, your views on that. Uh, Commissioner, I, I do not understand the role of the judiciary to be about uh, either perpetuating uh, this, the policy of this administration or the policy of the, the, the other administration. The Constitution it's itself, in so many words, says that judges are subject to the Constitution and the law. So judges, regardless of the administration that is in power, are constitutionally obliged to decide cases in accordance with what the Constitution and the law says, whatever the administration. Uh, indeed, uh, I must state the obvious, which is even the oath of office that we take says that is what we must do, apply the law in accordance with the Constitution and the law, and we must do so impartially and everything else. So if the law has been changed by another administration through acceptable legal uh, processes and that is the existing law, there is no constitutional challenge against it, that is the law that we will apply. If there is a constitutional challenge, it is well grounded, we will invalidate the law regardless of the, the, the administration that put it up. Uh, I believe that that should also deal with your second question about any temptations. We, 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 we swear allegiance to the constitution and the law and uh, I do not think any temptations would come into the equation. Thank you, thank you, Justice Madlanga. Uh, maybe just an elaboration, but it won't uh, uh, necessitate your, your response. Uh, this uh, area that I, that, 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 that I put uh, to you uh, has been a concern even in, the, in, in, in America. Uh, the judicial process, they say during, uh, during uh, Obama's uh, administration, uh, he had the same challenge, and they said that challenge was also faced by uh, by Nixon's administration uh, during 1970, during 1969 and 1971, and Roosevelt faced the same uh, in 1937. Uh, of course, mindful of the fact that, that uh, relatively our constitutional democracy is uh, is fairly new, uh, there is a likelihood that maybe in future. Uh, that could be a possibility. Uh, uh, just the last point, just the last point now, so, so that when you, when you, re, when you respond, uh, at least uh, you also respond to my last question. Uh, the, the judgment that you have referred to uh, as, one, as one of your breaking, breaking ground, the New Nation Movement, uh, as per the judgment, the, the bill is before Parliament. But what uh, uh, comes to my mind uh, in terms of the thrust of the judgment, which says uh, uh, the route to parliament and legislature uh, cannot only be through political party, but also through uh, individuals and independent. Just uh, educate to me on that aspect. Uh, at, the local, at the local level, local government level, when an independent or uh, a what candidate of a political party uh, passes on, a vacancy is declared and a uh, by-election uh, takes place. Now, at the, at the legislature level and also at the parliament level, when that individual or an independent uh, passes away, a vacancy will be declared. Uh, but uh, I don't get a sense in terms of 
how will that independent fill that vacancy because uh, he would have passed on? Maybe if you can just uh, educate me on that aspect. Thank you. Uh, uh, happily, happily, Commissioner, and uh, this is by no means ducking your question. Happily, all that I had to grapple with was an interpretative uh, process. If, uh, I mean, you're referring to the, 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 the Roosevelt and uh, Obama and so on administrations in the context of what happens in the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court, I would imagine that uh, you, you have actually read my judgment. Uh, if you, are, you, know, you have that kind of interest, you would have had an interest to read the judgment. If uh, you will see in that judgment how extensively I deal with various sections of the Constitution itself. So my judgment turns on an interpretation of the... I actually start from Section 1, the founding uh, provisions of the... And I traverse quite a large part of the Constitution into the hundreds you know, of sections, section maybe 200 and something and so on. A number. So my judgment turns on an interpretative exercise of the Constitution. And I say, not to have this is unconstitutional. And what do I then do with the agreement of the majority of my, my colleagues? I say, but we suspend this and we send it to Parliament. It is for parliamentarians to then see what they do with that vacancy. It is not for the court. All that I had to do was to say, but this one act that is before me now is unconstitutional. How it gets corrected, throw it to Parliament. That's their terrain. Otherwise, I, as part of the court, will be straying into their terrain. Separation of powers does not allow that. Thank you, Justice Malaga. Thank, thank you, Acting President. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Mwema. Commissioner Lucas. Thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, Acting President. Now, a lot has been said about the issues that I would love to went in, like the delays and the issues of women. And uh, even about the three and a half years. Now, my question is about the issue of, I think we extensively spoke about the issue of delays in the court system and then about the principle of justice, delayed is justice denied. But even yourself, Justice Matlanga, said that you think you are working very hard in the Constitutional Court. My question to you as a candidate that aspire to become the Chief Justice. Oh, okay, I wanted to tell you about the other question that I had before I come to my question. So one of my questions was practically, besides the theory that you wrote about, what have you done to empower women? But I think by now I, you don't need to respond to that one. We have, I, I have done a lot. <laughs> we, have, we have passed that one. No, yeah, but I, I have done a lot. But, but the, yes. the issue is that you have done a lot, yes, in the courts and in your theory. But in terms of making sure that you empower women in the communities to understand how they can use the courts for justice to be done to them. It's, that is exactly what the context of my question okay. would have been. So I want to go further and ask, how are we going to, if you are appointed as a Chief Justice. How are you going to make sure that you have a community that is more justice savvy, that understand better how they can utilize your judiciary for a better dispensation for themselves? That is the first, but I want to ask and sit back. And also, how will you work on building a cadre of hardworking, but also smart working judicial officials to ensure that really our people get justice, and they feel and they see justice to be done to themselves. 
That will be my questions. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, with regard to the issues of uh, communities and uh, and uh, um, access to justice, I would say that uh, there has to be a collective effort on 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 these uh, issues. Um, for example, can't the judiciary partner with, uh, say, because, for example, parliamentarians do constituency work. Um, some of the parliamentarians are in uh, the Justice Committee in the collective effort, can't they too just assist in that uh, the aspect of, you know, the educative aspect? Uh, this is not to pass the buck. I'm just saying it may have to be an effort that is much, much wider than focusing on one aspect, just the judiciary. But yes, the judiciary may also play a role in that educative uh, process. Um, speeches, papers, but it is not practical for the judiciary to go out to several uh, communities. It does not have that same kind of outreach. Uh, so I think it would be unrealistic for me sitting here to seriously make make promises with regard to what can be done, but something can s certainly be done with regard to some forms of outreach, like I say, maybe addresses, um, lectures, and so on. But the best practical way would be more than just the judiciary being involved, but a broader approach, a collective approach, and I think that that broader or collective approach would uh, better reach the the communities. Um, a cater of uh, hard-working judicial officers. Um, you are able to You can work hard, but if the situation or the circumstance you, you, you find yourself in does not uh, permit you to achieve the sort of outcomes that you achieve, the hard work may take you this far and not that far. Um, an example is what I said, for example, about the delays at the, the Constitutional Court, uh, which I said were a function of, I identified at least two examples, um, the deluge of new applications and also just one example of our, our processes on which I said we now have solutions. So. To have a cater of judicial office officers that work hard, but I would also emphasize, but also have the desired outcomes, or I are able to bring about the desired outcomes, I would say one would have to, to focus on the working conditions, on problems, on bottlenecks, and uh, try as hard as possible to solve those 
that will then enhance the working environment and improve on outcomes. I, I ask these questions to someone that aspired to be the Chief Justice, and I ask these questions to you if you would have been the Chief Justice. But I just want to mention an example of what I think is not smart working. What is not what? Smart working. You are called to the court. You get a, a, a letter that says you must be there at 9. 9 o'clock you arrive at the court. It is the time when the officials in the court begin to prepare themselves for your case, which means the only time that you will be able to appear in front of a magistrate is possibly 11 or 12 o'clock. Sometimes people sit there up until 4 o'clock, the court closed, no one inform people that your case will not be in front of us today. So what I'm saying is how, the, what I'm saying is that attitude or that ethics that, that need to be built for judicial officials to understand that you must also put in effort or you must also plan better to be able to serve communities better. I mean, as parliamentarian, you justly said that we are representing communities and that is why we are here where we are. As parliament, we were, during lockdown, able for two years to do a review across the country, all people. And that is why I'm speaking about uh, uh, this thing, public uh, education and public involvement. Because if you work smart you, and you plan properly, you will be able to do all these things. I don't want general response. I want the response of someone that they've got a vision as to how we are going to make sure that what we are supposed to be doing, it is actually accessible to our people out there. So that is, why, that is why on some of the things I say, don't respond. But on, on other things I say, build a cadre that they've got an ethic of service delivery and they want to make sure that they educate our communities. Because even through the process in the court, you can educate people. But sometimes you go to court, you don't understand even where you must go, you don't even know what to do. Uh, particularly, some of us never went to court in our life when we were younger. Now that we are older, sometimes we, we clap people and we are being taken to court. <laughs> and then you don't even know what to do. I'm just mentioning it. Thank you. Uh, go, yeah, go, Commissioner, thank you. Um, I, I would like to respond. Uh, and thank you very much that you, you actually gave a concrete uh, example because when a, you know, a question is asked in broad terms like that, it may be difficult for you to, 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 to grapple, with, you grapple with it uh, in, in practical terms as well. Um, let me... Uh, I like responding by making reference to myself. Let me do that here as well. When I was a high court judge and therefore sat all by myself, except in those instances where I would be part of a panel on appeal, uh, court started at 10 then, not even the nine o'clock that you are referring to, the high court. Um, if at something like three minutes to ten, the court orderly had not come to fetch me, I would walk out of my office, go straight to the courtroom, enter without that court rise and all that announcement, and go and sit down. And everybody would jump and run around, and, and I would not get out until everybody got organized and uh, started doing something or began with the business of the day. Where am I going with that? Um, if that is how my own makeup is, as a Chief Justice, this is something that I would not only be willing to, but that I would actually sell and I would 
go to the right levels of the the judiciary to 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 make sure that there is the kind of cadre that you are talking about uh, commissioner and this would come naturally in my case thank you thank you commissioner lucas Commissioner Badenbach. Thank you um, very much, Acting President. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, Justice Madanga. Yes, yes, Commissioner. Oh. Uh, you, you must be really tired having a. Uh, very. <laughs> very, Commissioner. Yes. Not sure how. How fair it is to subject you to such a long period. Of <laughs> I was I was part of this body when we when we subjected Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng to two days of okay. this. So maybe maybe I should not complain. <laughs> My sympathy for you has just evaporated. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, Justice Malanga, your, your views on access to justice are, are terribly exciting, um, and I support them 100%. And uh, um, there are members of the Portfolio Committee on Justice on this body, and uh, the chairperson, in fact, of the Portfolio Committee is there with you, and the minister is here with you. So I think uh, between us, we can actually try and do something about that. I think it's a worthwhile project. Thank you. Uh, to understand. Um, one of the consequences of Questioning you so late in the day is, of course, not sure if it's an advantage or disadvantage, is of course that most of the questions have been traversed. Uh, and I'm a great admirer of brevity, and so I will not uh, re ask any of the questions that have been asked. Yes. Uh, what I do, what I would like to uh, uh, take up with you is, is if you are appointed, how do you propose to properly and efficiently? Uh, close the, the gap between the Superior Court Judiciary and the Lower Court Magistracy in order to promote unity, mutual respect and an, an efficient uh, delivery of justice uh, within the component of the judiciary. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, even though I, 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 I stated it very, very briefly, it is one of those issues that I want to, to I would if appointed, I would uh, focus on. Um, I, 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 I touch on the fact that uh, the, the two main points that I've been able to, to identify, but uh, there's certainly probably more, um, um, that uh, the magistracy is raising are the question of um, they are a move from the Department of Justice one and then the question of what has been referred to as uh, integration <clears throat> um, I, I am for I am for 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 for, for the idea of, 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 of uh, integration in the sense that we, we should be one judiciary in the true sense but that can not mean uh, that we will not have the levels that we have because we, we do have the magistracy which itself is at two levels. Those will continue to be realities. And also the appointment processes, uh, uh, it, it may perhaps not be practical to, to use the same body Imagine you, you th th there are more vacancies in the magistracy and, uh, and, and this body, if it were one, to be one body doing all the appointments, there would be nothing that you would ever do. You would be coming here, maybe at one session you are appointing many magistrates and many judges and then because there are vacancies all the time, this would probably probably be all that you would ever be able to um, to do. Um, so integration, yes. One umbrella, yes. But all of these
to be done with a recognition of the reality that there are different levels and coming up with practical ways of how, how to, 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 to address or to work with the reality of those two differences, uh, uh, different levels, but under one, uh, one umbrella, one judiciary. Um, yeah, I, I would leave. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Badenbach. Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Acting President. Good evening, uh, Justice Madlanga. Good, good evening, Commissioner. Uh, Justice Madlanga, my question relates to access to justice and actually in an interesting way latches on to the um, question of a uh, few of the commissioners that are just going before me. Um, access to justice and specifically the small claims court. Now, if one, uh, you spoke about courts down to the magistrate's court level at district level, I think that was the lowest I've heard you speak uh, so far. But, but if one now um, thinks about Section 165 of the Constitution, which gives the responsibility to the Chief Justice over the judicial function of all courts, I'm going to highlight the all courts aspect of it, um, this includes what Section 166E refers to as any other court that is other than higher and magistrates' courts. So we're talking really about courts closer to the communities even than, than those that you refer to. How do you see the role of Chief Justice, uh, you know, if any at all, in, for example, the small claims court where many citizens get access to justice, in fact, at the time that I'm speaking to you now, there's probably some um, small claims courts functioning at the moment with people coming from work and then attending the courts and so on. And, and where many lawyers sit as commissioners. So how do you see uh, your role? What's, do you have a vision for that as well? Um, because I, I, even though it, this was uh, years back, this is something that I have actually seen work and uh, and when I say years back, it, it really is years back. This is when I was doing pupillage and uh, uh, the advocate I was doing pupillage under um, was a, a, a commissioner in a small claims court. So he used to go there and uh, I would go with him in the evenings after work and I would just sit at the back. And uh, I, in practical terms, I actually saw how well the system works. Um, and, and of course, then the, the, the monetary ju jurisdiction was uh, quite low. It still is low even now, but it is much, much better now. And uh, you are quite right to say that uh, that is a system that works with access of justice. Um, and uh, I recently had occasion to actually go through the act. And it, it makes the process quite accessible. It does away with the clutter or formal uh, processes and so on. It, it, it's so easy, in fact, that a non-lawyer who can read the act can be able to start their own case, lodge it with a small claims court, and be able to, to run with it. But of course, with, uh, with people who, who, who cannot uh, read and be able to do it themselves, um, um, efforts would have to be made to 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 educate people about uh, about it. It is, I agree with you, a very useful access to court uh, to court tool. It would just have to be used optimally. Are you not muted, Commissioner? Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the, the, I think the initial act was something like, you know, 36 years ago, and there's been some amendments being um, worked on and so on. But, uh, what, uh, you know, what I actually want to hear on is your vision, and to, is there any um, vision or thoughts on integration of this part of the court into the greater, wider court structure of South Africa? Because, uh, you know... It, Otherwise, it's sort of an, an, an excluded side branch, which is not really pulled in under the what the constitution really seems to intend. Mm. 
Um, I, I would say that as long as the idea of integration does not bring within that court the sort of traditions that we know to exist within the, the, the other components of our court system. So if in essence it, 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 it stays the same, I mean the very idea that it has been sold to practitioners to participate in it as commissioners free of charge is in, in itself quite a benefit to the poor and the vulnerable who have ready access to court. So as long as the idea of integration will not unfortunately bring some of the problems that makes, or I'm sorry, that make the rest of our court system inaccessible. I, I would have uh, no, no problems with that idea, but as to what the actual integration would entail, I, I, I will not sitting here claim to, to have any concrete ideas on it. But what I definitely do have ideas on, the, the current system in terms of, you know, it's accessibility that we should protect. Thank you. Um, my second question I'll leave due to the time constraints, but I'd like to move on to, uh, to a third aspect and uh, possibly the last thing that I would deal with today. And that is, I see in paragraph 21 of your application that you also um, uh, function as a lessor of properties, whether directly or indirectly, um, so rental properties now. Um, and then I, I noticed in your judgment in Daniel versus uh, Daniel versus Scribante, where you draw the you, where you um, you know extend the ESTA legislation and rights of the occupant of a property to be able to make changes where even against the wills of or against the will or the wishes of whoever owns the property. <laughs> so I was just wondering in your, in your context as a, a lessor, um, you, know, you know, some of the contracts as a standard discipline term would be not to, uh, not to allow someone to make changes to a property without the uh, owner consenting. So um, do you think that this type of judgment opens the way for a, a um, overall or rethinking of that clause on, on, on a constitutional level? I, no, I think, I, think, I, I think that the, 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 a crucial aspect of my judgment, which was centered on dignity, the right to dignity, uh, was the fact that it was in the context of Esther. This is somebody who is entitled to live here on this farm in terms of an act of parliament that seeks to 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 address in fact in a sense esther is at the 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 heart of um deprivation you will have seen in that judgment i actually open with the words of uh, mr Nkosi, who says and I'm paraphrasing and summarizing seriously, but the substance of what he says is, without land, we are nothing. So that was the context, in, and, and then you will see I go at length uh, into the history of uh, land dispossession in the, in the country. So I think what I say in that judgment should be viewed in the context of what it was about. This poor lady is on this piece of land. She's not asking to break down walls, uh, take off the roof, you know. Uh, all she was asking was, I want to be able at night, if I want water and I've forgotten to fill up my bucket, I don't want, if I want to drink, to go outside. I want to have a tap inside this house. I want to replace this window. I want to level the floors in this. All she wa 
and and you should bear in mind in that case commissioner that the respondents the farm manager and the farm owner did not dispute what she said she wanted and she wanted to do it out of her own pocket but they just said no we will have none of that and i said effectively this makes nonsense of esther this makes nonsense of a constitutional or a constitutionally guaranteed right that she enjoys and that goes to the question of dignity and i said based on that she is entitled to do what she said she wanted to do out of her pocket even if the owner did not give permission thank thank you very much uh, that's those are my questions thank, thank you thank you thank you commissioner thank you very much thank you commissioner banat commissioner malema uh, thank you acting uh, president uh, justice madlanga i just want to ask I know you dealt with that in your questionnaire of going to the bench and going back to be an advocate. I, I, I find it very strange. Uh, please take us through. Yes. Um, Commissioner, I had uh, gone to the bench or come to the bench uh, fairly young. Well, I may be criticized maybe at the level of well, that was not a sound judgment on my part. And if somebody says so, uh, maybe I will not try to argue against that. I came to the bench uh, fairly young. At the time I did, I was the youngest judge in South Africa. I was uh, 34. Uh, some may say 34 is old. <laughs> um, I had a young family. Um, and you know what uh, that uh, entails in terms of uh, expenses and so on and so on. Um, and after about five years, uh, I just uh, could no longer. And I was, I was uh, quite public about this. I was never even secretive about it. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, the sort of uh, silent... Uh, resigned for what what was the term that's usually that's normally used personal reason or something like that um, fine I did not make a public statement but I was open about it um, the minute I felt no I ca can no longer stand it I went to I was acting at the constitutional court at the time I went to President Shaskalsin. I explained everything to him. I was open with him. I didn't just say personal reasons. No, I'm, I'm out. And then I made an appointment with um, the, the minister then was uh, Minister Penwell Maduna. I also um, spoke to him fully, explained and gave him the same facts that I've just given to you now. Uh, both of them did uh, try to 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 dis to, to to say, ah, no, 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 please don't. And uh, I mean, I understood where they were coming from, but uh, unfortunately, Commissioner, um, the reality was I just could no longer go on. It was uh, to cut a long story short. Those, uh, unfortunately, and 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 I left for not for, for it was not for any lack of love for the job. I still liked what I was doing. I would have stayed on, and, but, but it just became impossible. And uh, rather than reach a point where it would, uh, I'm not saying I would have done anything improper, but you know, it could uh, have reached a, a point where it just becomes uh, you know, um, horrible for me in the sense that there's the judge uh, getting sequestrated or something like that. Those, those were the facts, uh, Commissioner. Why did you come back? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for <laughs> the laughter. <laughs> um, I still remember the dates, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. Um, I was on holiday in December, uh, you know, late December after Christmas, uh, late 20s, 
uh, yeah, close to the end of the month, and I was called by, I, 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 I hope my colleagues will not uh, feel embarrassed about me revealing this. And I was called by uh, the acting Chief Justice. Um, he was still uh, the Judge President of the Labour Court, but he had uh, <clears throat> acted at the Constitutional Court. And uh, he, 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 he said he, he, there was something he wanted to talk to me about. Uh, and I said, well, fortunately I am, I was on holiday in Durban. I said, I am in Durban, and he came to me to see me. It was on the first of uh, January 2012, I think. And he broached the subject with me and, uh, and said, haven't your circumstances changed now? And even before I left, he had been wanting me to go to act at the Labour Appeal Court. He was really sitting on me. So that's the level at which he, he, he respected me as a colleague and, a, and as a judge. And so he, he, he said, as a colleague who knew me and who respected me, um, um, did I not think that it was now time to come and rejoin them as, uh, as colleagues on the bench? And then on the 18th of February, uh, and with him having called me a few days before, I met my colleague whom you mentioned, uh, Justice Jafta. He also asked to, 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 to meet me. I met him on the 18th of uh, February that same year, and, and he too broached uh, the same subject. Um, I might mention that other colleagues as well, a friend of mine who is a judge in Port Elizabeth, Judge Mandela Makaula, had been talking about the same thing quite a number of times. But you know how sometimes you treat friends. I never took my close, close, close friend. I mean, he comes from my hometown, grew up as a young Bafana together. I, I would just tell him to, yeah, get off. So I started, uh, I then started thinking uh, about it uh, quite seriously, Commissioner, and, uh, and I think that did weigh heavily with me. My question is, why did you come back? You left because you had personal circumstances that led to you leaving. So you are coming back meant that those circumstances have changed for the better, to avoid having a judge being sequestrated. I, I, I felt I was uh, comfortable to come back. So you came back in February? No, 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 to join the court. No, that was meeting Justice Shafter on the 18th of February, 2012. I was then appointed uh, with effect from the 1st of August, 2013. Now, do you think that uh, judges must go to the houses of politicians? Do you think it is correct for judges to go to the houses of politicians? And later say, no, I had visited the house of a politician because there was a matter of national importance that I wanted to discuss with this politician. But you can't take the country into confidence as to what are those matters of national importance that makes you visit politicians in their houses. Do you think that helps to enhance the good image of the judiciary? Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I would say, yeah, to, to the extent that uh, the, 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 the situation may create suspicion, perceptions, and so on, I would, uh, I would say, say it, is, it is not right. But at the level of whether or not you should go at all, um, I, I would say, I mean, uh, we, we know uh, there are politicians that I know at a personal level um, and I would have no problems with them coming to my house, and I would have, I would have no problems at all, all going to their houses. Uh, but, but I again emphasize, and my understanding is that what you raise with me is at the level of a possibility of a perception 
that may even create possibilities of uh, does this not get to the level of a lack of impartiality you know those sort of negative perceptions that should not exist around the judiciary if it is something that would raise those sort of problems i would say then there is something wrong with it no i understand the one of friendship and all yes. of that we live yes. in the same yes. society yes. we have gone to school together yeah. and all manner of things but a point where yeah. it comes out later that you visited a politician um, and uh, when you are asked, what were you doing in that politician's house? You say, no, we're discussing a matter of national importance. So meaning, you have a secret with a politician as a judge. And when that type of a meeting is exposed, you are still not in a position to take the country into confidence. Does it help to build the confidence of society on our judiciary? Where a judge can have a secret with a politician and when exposed you still don't want to reveal that type of a secret does it help to enhance Any, the good image of the judiciary anything anything mr malema including that example it could even be a different example anything that could that could create the impression uh, of you know the, the the possibility the possibility of an association that may create a perception of um, lack of impartiality lack of independence uh, is deleterious to the idea of an independent judiciary i don't know if i heard you properly Justice about, you said that Chief Justice oh, must be, yeah. no, I'm on something else, I'm done with that one. Oh, okay. You said uh, Chief Justice must be a judge and not be this super SG and plus uh, you don't want to claim that you understand the administrative role of a Chief Justice, you don't know. Are you saying you are applying for a position where you don't know, apart from being a judge, what is required or what are the duties of this chief justice administratively? Um, because I had to say you don't know those responsibilities, you don't want to be claiming to know them because no, more I'm than not. being a judge yes, now, yes. we are looking because the judge's story and a judge of a constitutional court yes, is yes. out that one. We, we know you can be. And we have no doubt about it. Now we're looking for a leader who's going to have to be not only a judge, but also lead administratively to make sure that this uh, court runs um, effectively, and not only the court, the whole of judiciary. And key amongst those will also include the spending. Because I had someone saying to you, don't like budget. And leadership is budget. Whether you are a president of South Africa or not, you can't have a minister of finance. You can't prevail over and make sure that all of those things are done accordingly because let's say the SG misuses the funds. It's going to come back to you. Because as you are speaking about the, the SG of the constitutional court, I'm trying to imagine even the picture. I can't even think of that person. Who is this person? All I'm thinking of with the constitutional court, mukhe mukhe. So, if anything goes wrong, whether you are interfering or you don't interfere, mm -hmm. whether you like the budget or don't like the budget, it's going to come back to you as a leader of that institution. Mm -hmm. So uh, please uh, make me comfortable about that because I had to say uh, you don't know the administrative roles, you don't want to interfere, you don't want to be a super SG, and therefore uh, some of those things will leave to people that we're not subjected to this. And as a leader, you take full responsibility, including the, the mistakes of the SG, they come back to you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Malema. Um, uh, uh, if I created uh, an impression of being clueless as to what the Chief Justice uh, does administratively, 
um, that was not intended. Um, because if that were the case, I would not have been in a position to attempt in what I believe was a fairly detailed manner to even set out a vision as to how certain issues should be addressed in future. Um, so um, I, I do have an idea of the sort of administrative or leadership issues that uh, relate to and can be performed by a Chief Justice. And, and some of them are even, for example, in the Judicial Service Act, Superior Courts Act, and, 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 and even the Constitution, uh, one of the commissioners who were online <clears throat> actually uh, referred me to, to, to the norms and standards that in terms of the Constitution must be set up by the Chief Justice. What I was uh, seeking to, to address with regard to what I do not know and which should uh, uh, be um, hopefully, uh, Commissioner Malema, be acceptable because I have not been exposed to that as an ordinary judge of the Constitutional Court. Um, what I was seeking to refer to was the possibility of other administrative functions that may well be out there as well. Uh, and it is those that I was trying to, to refer to. It was by no means saying I, as a Chief Justice, if appointed, I would shake or shake the responsibility with regard to those that I say are clearly uh, within the remit of the, the, <clears throat> the Chief Justice. With regard to the budget, uh, that too, I, 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 I just said, it's something that I will apply my mind to. It is something that I am even willing to consider what the best practice internationally is on it. Uh, uh, that is, who in, in, in other jurisdictions, in particular comparable jurisdictions, say in Africa, uh, yes, of course, uh, I could look elsewhere as well. Uh, who within those judiciaries, for example, I first heard the idea of an administration that is attached to the court and removed from the, 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 the other executive functions. I first heard of that idea from a colleague from Mozambique uh, when I was a judge earlier. We knew nothing about that in, in, in South Africa at the time. So one can learn even on issues about how our budgets are administered from what other countries do. So it was not a question of an outright rejection of the idea. I guess it was more a question of saying managing monies. But I did say, if you remember, uh, uh, Commissioner Malema, I did say, um, but of course, the reaction that I have given, which I'm not, uh, without rejecting your idea, Commissioner Singh, the, 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 the idea in no way suggests that I am averse to being involved at all on budgets. I said, because the OCJ services the judiciary, and because the Chief Justice is the head of the judiciary, it makes practical sense for the, judici for the Chief Justice to have an input on the OCJ's budget. And of course, it would not be only the Chief Justice, other heads of course at all levels would also have, would also have to have an input. Um, uh, uh, Justice Malanga, as you speak <laughs> about learning this um, administrative components that we may not be aware of, 
I put another six months to one year of you learning that into these three years. And then I put another three to six months of you learning in the outside world how the budget works. And you are left now with one year, six months before you do the actual thing, just learning. Because if you ask us, uh, uh, politicians, when you are Zoom office, the most difficult thing, she's there, she's a speaker. She, she is not old in that position. For sure, she's still grappling with a lot of small detail. Some she even gets shocked, oh, he's done this way or that way. By the time she becomes well equipped as a speaker, it's 2024 we're going to elections. Because to learn administration must never be confused to be meaning some simple thing or you are just going to arrive at an office where you are going to be welcomed with both hands. You are going to have to learn these people and do all manner of things. Which I thought Justice Madlanga would have done some small onion research even if you are a small, even if you are a junior I'm um, not junior, I don't want to call you such things. What? What would judge, not in the office of Chief Justice, but an ordinary judge. Mm, yes. But preparing for this uh, it's, type... It's not puny, not at the level of yes. the constitutional court. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, sorry, Commissioner Malema. As an ordinary judge, yes. who's now preparing to go into that office, you would have said to us, about, apart from this that is described in the constitution and the norms and standards and all of that, these are the issues administratively uh, we're going to have to deal with. And on matters of budget, you would have also looked at what happened to the previous Chief Justice and what are the issues that you want to take up immediately when you take over. Because we don't want to hear of a scandal of corruption coming out of the office of the Chief Justice because our Chief Justice doesn't know how the budget in that office operate in that six months when you are still trying to learn you know these people of south africa already they've approved the it tender it's gone and it's not done properly so uh what, because i'm going to raise these points when we retreat on on saturday that i'm worried about these issues that you, you are going to be this good judge and get destroyed by this small detail that you have not given yourself sufficient time to acclimatize yourself with or have an idea of how you are going to deal with it because it's very big, it might be small, but it's a very big uh, operation which makes that office run on a daily basis. Um, on the first issue about the possibility of a long time uh, being taken, um, finding out what happens in other jurisdictions with regard to the budget, um, I, would, I would say that the time cannot be long at all. I mean, if appointed, I will have ready access to, to, to chief justices in other countries, pick up the phone and just ask the question, pick up the phone, talk to another chief justice. Within uh, a few days, you have, the, you have the information readily at hand. For example, I, I said earlier that uh, we, we found what the situation is with regard to turnaround times for handing down judgments by, by apex courts. We, we were tasked by our colleagues to, to do this, uh, the, the, to work on the, the working procedures, revise the working procedures of the Constitutional Court second half of, uh, of last year. By the 5th of December, we already had a, a completed document, which of course we are just uh, crossing the T's, dotting the I's on now, but we are able to pull out one recommendation for immediate implementation. But even there, we had had to go out to, set to other jurisdictions on information, and we were able to come out with a document within a very short space of time. Second half, by December, we have something ready. And on this one, and if I'm Chief Justice, I will be able to just pick up the phone. Who controls the budget and, and, and how? Um, I, I, even on the second one, Commissioner, I, I do not uh, 
share uh, your view that it would take a terribly long time for me to get around uh, the question of, of uh, I have interacted with the, the Secretary General um, um, uh, in contexts that of course have nothing to do with being Chief Justice, which I am not. Uh, and the, Chief, the, the, the Secretary General is, is very cooperative, very supportive to, to the judiciary. Immediately upon appointment, I would set up an appointment with her, and uh, and, and and she would take me through the processes. And uh, I, I think you you heard me when I was talking earlier about uh, you know uh, getting up to speed on. I even rattled off a few principles, you know, in the sort of areas of law that we as black uh, people would not be exposed to talking about in, in, inutility, lack of innovativeness, and so on and so on. Things that you would be getting to hear about now for the first time. But you would quickly, quickly, you know, get on top of them and be able to participate effectively. And even when a case is argued before the court, you saw this for the first time now, you read the papers, you went outside of the papers, did your own research quickly, and in court, you are able to engage advocates sensibly and meaningfully. So even with this, I, I, I do not believe that for me, it would be something that would take me six months. And, you know, I, I, I do not believe it would, uh, Commissioner. My last question is, do you think commissions of inquiry add value in a democratic South Africa? Or is just a waste of money, or they are used by politicians to buy themselves time so that they can lull society and not be held accountable. Because I'm trying to think of any successful commission of inquiry since 1994. I, I can't think of any successful in a sense that when it concluded its work and made recommendations. There was serious follow-up and action was taken. There's no such. And as a result, a lot of money gets to be used in those commissions of inquiry. And lawyers just line up their pockets and make money out of the taxpayer. But we don't see results uh, of uh, uh, those uh, uh, commissions of inquiry. I mean... Uh, I'm asking this because you were in the Margana Commission. Um, there was a commission on arms deal. I, I, I don't know what is happening, what, where. So I'm trying to think, are these things really relevant? For I know they have a space in, the, in terms of the Constitution of the Republic and all of that. But have they really added value? in our democratic society or they were just used to buy time so politicians mm. can lull society and lawyers make money out of it. You see, it's, I know uh, it's, Mr. Mpofi and them won't agree with the money part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner Malema, for you know, reasons based on what you prefaced the question with and also what you ended the question with, may I ask please not to answer the question because you say so many ways politicians do this and you will remember that I repeatedly said here that uh, we as judges should avoid uh, engaging in, uh, in political controversy. May I please ask to... Yeah, let me ask it differently. <laughs> let me leave politicians. I had, I had to expect that. Do, do commissions of inquiry add value in our uh, judiciary or in our democratic society. Since 1994, have they played any significant role which helped um, ordinary people to receive justice? Of, 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 of the few that I, I, I can think of, I, I cannot 
uh, think of something that has uh, tangibly redounded to to the benefit of uh, of people. I cannot think of any. Thank you, uh, Justice Madlanga. Thank, Thank you, you Acting Commissioner President. Malema. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Malema. Justice uh, Madlanga, I've got two issues that I would like to canvas uh, with you before we conclude. And you already touched upon them earlier, but I'm um, coming from a different perspective. The, the first one is that South African judges come from various backgrounds. And the broad proposition that I want to put to you, uh, which will call for a simple answer, yes or no, uh, is this. Regardless of their past political affiliations, judges are expected to be scrupulously faithful to their oath of office and decide cases that come before them on their merits with integrity, courage, by applying the law to the facts. Do you subscribe to that uh, statement? Yes, I do. And the second one, and the, the last one, and you did allude to it earlier, that it is an illusion to think that the Chief Justice is a supernatural being with a monopoly of wisdom who will have all the answers for everything. And an astute Chief Justice will recognize that within the judiciary, as anywhere else for that matter, there will be judges with special skills and talents and indeed, and indeed leadership qualities and a chief justice of that kind would then be well advised to tap on these talents and skills for the good of the institution. Yes. And, and lastly, and we are now at the tail end of the interview, do you have anything else you would wish to say that may, in your view, be of assistance to us during our deliberations? I think I have said everything I ever could, uh, acting president. All I would do is uh, to thank the commissioners, uh, all without exception, for um, the manner in which um, I was engaged. But there's nothing else I want to add, uh, acting president. Thank you. Then it uh, remains for me to thank you most sincerely for availing yourself and for your answers to the questions which were posed to you by the members of the commission, which will be taken into account during our deliberations on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. You are n now excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
please, please call the next candidate, please. <laughs> You, you are usurping my powers, uh, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> no, Chair, I'm just saying we're ready for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, fellow Commissioners, we have now come to the end of our business for the day. And this is now an opportune moment to adjourn until tomorrow morning at nine o'clock on the dot when the next candidate will be interviewed. And thank you very much for your cooperation and um, go and retire now and come back tomorrow fully refreshed. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.